I should turn on my mic. United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey, welcome everyone. Uh, prior to this meeting, we did hold an executive session for legal issues. All right, uh, Commissioner Evans, do we have uh, opening comments? Yes, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. We're all in this together. Just a reminder, only questions or statements regarding an agenda item will be entertained under citizens to be heard at the top of the meeting. All other matters will be recognized during public comment at the end of the meeting. See you in September. Where did the summer go? As we move through back to school and into football season, let's not forget all the fun we had this summer in Callan. Movies in the park, our first salsa night, national night out with Chico's Vibe, the Chester County Town Tour at Spackman Davis Farm, the grand opening of the new municipal bridge, the completion of nearly all Ida related repairs, being awarded Municipality of the Year by Chester County Historic Preservation Network, new businesses planting the seeds of opportunity along Lincoln Highway, and most importantly, a summer that wasn't defined by COVID. But wait, there's more. Our September fun kicks off Saturday the 9th at Municipal Park with our 15th annual Town Community Day. If you want to be a part of it all, contact Abby Swan to uh, volunteer. If you just got your heart set on simply enjoying the festivities, nothing wrong with that. Just come on out and bring a hundred of your closest friends. The fun starts at 3 p.m. with food vendors, live music by Roger That, dance performances, a roaming magician, bounce houses, face painting, art show, caricatures, introduction to pickleball, over 70 vendors and exhibitors, first responders, and to cap the night off, fireworks. The poll is deep. We've had a strong response to our call for managerial applicants and resumes continue to come in. We've got a long list of promising individuals, more than enough to start the first round of the interview process with the first four scheduled for next week. Stay tuned. When we all work together, there's nothing we can't do. Spread kindness, everyone, anger, grudges and resentments are not worth our time or energy. Compassion, empathy, peace, and love, these are what makes the world go round. And thank you, Commissioner Evans. All right, next on the agenda, citizens to be heard for agenda items. I will reach out to the township here. Anybody? I do not see any hand raised at the moment. Uh, how about Zoom World? Yes, Mark, just name and address, please. Sure. Mark DeYoung, 20 Beaver Run Road. Hi, everybody. How are you? Good. Hey, Welcome. Good. Um, the agenda I'm, I'm talking about is is Lisa um, being able to sign for the new PPA, PPO plan, which is perfectly acceptable. makes all the sense in the world. The finance director would take care of that. That's not really my question. I just have questions about the plans themselves. Um, what percentage does the township pay compared to the employees of their medical care? 70%? Yeah, Lisa states uh, employees pay 70%. Seven? Oh, 7%. Does that yeah. answer the question, Daryl? Well, it answers the question, but that's... I'm sorry, go ahead. You're a little muffled. Oh, answer, there. Go ahead. Sorry, the answer to the question, but seems well out of the norm of the regular business world. I know a couple of you own businesses, and I'm sure you're not paying 93 percent of the cost. So I followed it up with a question to say, how does that compare to other municipal plans in our area and state? Microphone helps. The state I couldn't uh, comment about, but uh, locally with the uh, COG, our consortium, um, out of about 27 municipalities, there are 15 that uh, pay 100% of 
Now, this is for exempt employees. I'm not sure what who you're, what group of employees you're talking about. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. I didn't know it's just for exempt. Yeah. So 15 percent, uh, 15 of those municipalities pay 100 percent for exempt employees. Um, there are, I want to say, seven that pay 99 percent. And then the balance uh, is anywhere from uh, three to four percent. Well, that's huge compared to the uh, the public world. So, um, one other question, and I don't know if it's, it's probably not happening because we're paying that high percentage for one of the best plans there is, which is a PPO. But has there ever been talk, Lisa, about a high deductible health plan, which can lead to um, great results for not only employees, but also for the township. I have a high deductible health plan and I've been able to save thousands of dollars for future health issues through that plan. And the way it worked is that I would pay one third of what a PPO would cost and the township would match that two thirds. So after a while, you built the employee builds up quite a sum of money in order to pay for, you know, dental plans, think, you know, things that aren't always covered. So I don't know if the townships or the municipalities have discussed a high deductible health plan. Okay, I appreciate the comments there, Mark. Elisa, I assume the it's, PPO it's is It's the same plan renewed. that we've had, it's basically. It's the same policy that we've had. Yes. Yeah, so it's just a continuation. Correct. It, it went by the wayside okay. after the last member um, retired and we never got notice that they closed the plan. So we just want to reinstate the plan. Okay. I mean, it's always good to go shopping and, and yeah. see if oh, there's yeah, abs better, absolutely. better policy Yeah, and we do there. that every year. It's just to reinstate the plan just okay. to, to get it going again. That's all. Well, just yeah. one last statement. The people are a lot are very afraid of the high deductible health plan because that, that the name itself, you know, gives you some worry. But it's actually a great plan. If you have to go to a doctor, during the beginning of the year, you can always negotiate what's coming out. Um, the only thing is, you know, you have to save up for prescriptions in the very beginning of the year, but your balance can grow. And my balance has been growing for 10 years. And I even have professionals, doctors and lawyers that I banked that invest that money into the stock market. So there are high benefits to a high, high deductible plan. I just think it's something to bring up and with the other townships or municipalities that we deal with and see if you can't get together and, and figure out that, that it's, this is a good plan. Okay, I appreciate the comments there, Mark. Thank you. All right, thank you. It's Ms. Spaulding. Just name and address, please. Oh, you're muted. Sorry about that. 406 Lloyd Avenue, downtown. Um, hey Cheryl, welcome. Thank you. Um, the ordinance you're going to talk about tonight for the Chapter 29 um, qualifications and the 25-mile thing seems fine to me, but I, I had a question about something. In the first section, 29-5, I was, I was curious about whether that was new language or it was always in there because it makes it clear that the new person coming in, and I'll quote it, must have the ability to deal in an amicable and professional manner with the general public and township officials and employees. That is certainly, I'm very happy to see that because clearly I believe that was lacking in our previous township manager. And I was curious whether that was added or existed no, I, before. I, actually, that was existing. Really? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Interesting. Thank you. Yeah. That was just my question. Okay. All right, thank you, Cheryl. All right, any other uh, public comment? Citizens to be heard? All right, not at this time. Moving right along to Township Solicitor, Ms. Camp. Well, Thank you. So I'm participating remotely this evening. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, yes. Ms. Spalding has a nice uh, parlay into the next ma matter. It is to open a public hearing for the consideration of Ordinance 2023-05 which would amend chapter 29 of the Cown Code. Uh, that chapter deals with the manager position. 
And there's one minor change being proposed, and that's in section 29-5. The current language at the end of section 29-5 states that the manager need not be a resident of the township at the time of appointment, but shall become a permanent township resident within one year of the date of his employment, unless an, ex an exception is granted. The proposed amendment would change that last sentence to state that the manager need not be a resident of the township, but within one year of the date of his or her employment as manager, they must establish permanent residence within 25 miles of the township's boundaries, unless an exception is granted by the board. So again, in the interest of trying to be able to find a larger pool of candidates who might not be able to find suitable housing in the township, the board felt it was appropriate to change that particular section. Because it is an ordinance change, we did have to advertise tonight's hearing in the Daily Local News, which we did on August 23rd. And I also sent a copy of the ordinance to the Daily Local and to the Law Library for public inspection. So pretty simple change. Happy to answer any questions if the board members or anybody in the public has one. Commissioners, any questions on this? No. No. All right, uh, I'll reach out to the public. Anybody in the township building? Questions on this? I do not see any hands raised. Zoom world. Mark, you're muted. Uh, I didn't push anything, so I don't know how I got on there. So just a mistake. Okay. Yes, Cheryl, have your hand raised again. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, I think that's an excellent idea because in the real world nowadays, uh, traveling a distance of 25 miles to get to a, a job is certainly nothing. And I do think we're going to get a much better uh, pool of people to choose from by going to 25 miles beyond, to, to any distance beyond, and then 25 miles later. That just, it makes perfect sense to me. I don't, I think it, don't think in the real world, the days of people living nearby are, it's just not relevant. So true. All right, thank you, Cheryl. Any other comments? Mm -hmm. All right. There's no other que uh, questions. Uh, entertain a motion to adopt. So moved. There second. You go. Move. Okay. Second. Moved by right. Commissioner Evans, second by Commissioner Kennedy. All in favor? Say aye. 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 The motion's good, 4 0. I'd like to interrupt the meeting for just a second. Uh, I don't know. I, I'd like to introduce our one of our state house representatives oh. here. This is Danielle Freelotten. Welcome. How are you? We have a mic. Yes, there you, you have go. to turn Sorry, it on. Sorry, thank you, Mark. Um, yeah, I might not stay long, but we were supposed to present a citation tonight, but apparently I got the dates mixed up. So I'm just here to say hello, and we were hoping to give you guys a citation, which I imagine will be coming um, for your <laughs> historical pres preservation um, oh. recognition, um, so Representative Williams and I. So. Oh, to say thanks oh, thank to everyone you so much. and thank congratulations you. on your recognition. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. Right. Thanks for joining us. All right. All right then, Ms. Camp, we have one more item. Yes. And Dave Gibbons, Abby, he will be participating. I don't know if he, if you can see if he's on, but he is the engineer. Um, if the board recalls, and I know the president, um, Mr. Mullen was not here for the presentation, but Eli Kahn and representatives of the Cohen family came to a board meeting not so long ago. Um, they would like to, they petitioned the board, the township, to rezone the property that the Cohen family owns, uh, located at 4109 Lincoln Highway. Um, the property is currently split zoned. The portion of the property that's located closer to Lincoln Highway is zoned TV1, and the portion of the property further in the rear is zoned R4. The property is currently um, being used as an active junkyard. Um, and the Cohen family actually has been trying to find potential buyers. Uh, they, they indicated to the board that they do have people that would be interested in continuing the junkyard use, but they have more of an interest in trying to sell it for residential development. Mm -hmm. They hired an attorney. Uh, Mr. Kahn is just acting as an agent for them in, in his expertise of development. He is not... Um, the, he is not the potential developer necessarily. The Cohen family um, also retained counsel, Brian Nagel from McElroy Harvey. They sent over a proposed zoning amendment, which would accomplish 
like, you know, what they're trying to do in terms of allowing multifamily development. Your ordinance today does allow multifamily development. What they're proposing is some of the area and bulk standards would be um, a little bit different. And there's really, when you when you carefully examine the changes that they're proposing, there's really not as many changes as you would think looking at the ordinance. So, Abby, if you could pull up on the screen the sketch plan. Um, they had presented a sketch plan. When Ray and I looked at the sketch plan, Ray had some suggestions about the width of the roads. Their original proposal was to have the, the roads be only 24 feet wide. And the problem with that width is that that does not allow parking on any side of the street. The roads need to be a minimum of 28 feet in width to allow parking. And one of the things that we, Ray and I, you know, in discussion with the applicant um, and their counsel and their engineer, we felt that parking would likely be an issue um, in denser developments. You know, oftentimes I think the township already is experiencing some issues with townhome developments needing additional parking. So we encourage them to sort of go back to the drawing board as far as the dimensions of the roads. And they were able to do that so that um, the roads are, are, are wider. Um, the changes that they're proposing, number one would be to rezone, you know, the portion that's zoned R4, what, what, what they what how they've presented it, it would it would allow a more dense multifamily development. When I say more dense, the area and bulk standards that they're seeking to change would be I'm going to go through them. The first is the width of the townhomes. Currently today, your ordinance requires minimum width to be 24 feet wide. They would like to take that down to 20 feet wide. And they've indicated that that seems to be the product that is on the market today. Smaller footprint of a home. The second change is the building setback line. Currently today for multifamily developments, your ordinance requires 30 foot setback from the right of way and a 40 foot setback from the curb. What they're proposing is a 20 foot setback from the curb line. The next changes are the separations between the townhome units themselves. Currently today, for side by side separation, if you had two townhome you know, clusters, your ordinance today would require a minimum 40 feet separation. They've proposed it to be 20 feet. If the homes are side to rear, currently you're at a 50 foot setback, they'd like to take it to 40. And then finally, if it's rear to rear, currently your ordinance is a 60 foot minimum setback, they wanna take that to 40 feet. Um, the current ordinance requires a, a perimeter track. So if you had a townhome development, the distance from the, the first, you know, the townhome to the property boundary, currently you require 50 feet. They're suggesting to take that to 25 feet. Um, everything else, oh, I know, the, um, let's see, the ordinance today requires 50% open space and their proposed ordinance didn't really have any standard for open space, but I believe that the sketch plan that they presented does is able to maintain that 50% open space. Some of the other things that they have put into their draft ordinance, we believe are really better kept in your subdivision ordinance. So for example, they have some language about the street widths, the street alignment and sidewalks. Those are topics that are currently contained within your subdivision ordinance. And as the board is aware, you're, you're able to waive standards in SOUDO so we encourage the developer and the applicant to not put those into a zoning text amendment, but instead to address those issues when we get to the subdivision land development stage of the game. So that's sort of the, the background of, you know, this is the second step after they met with the board. The board was comfortable with a proposed multifamily development on this track. They'd like to see this reuse is what we heard as the message. They've now put it into an ordinance format. Ray and I think there's a way to achieve what they want, but just to tweak the way you get to that through the ordinance. Um, and we'll have Dave, if he's available, to sort of walk through the sketch plan and answer any questions the board has. Thanks, Kristen. I, I'm here. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, yes. Well, yeah, so I think you did a really good job touching on a lot of the topics. One thing I did want to note, though, Kristen, is in looking at the road width uh, and allowing parking on... Uh, one side of the street, we would actually propose that, I don't know if you guys can see the plan, but there's kind of two pods. Uh, essentially, there's a grouping of townhomes that are up along Lincoln Highway, 
And then they're almost completely separated by a large area of floodplain and open space um, from the northern section that, excuse me, would access off of Park Drive. Um, and so going back to the road widths and parking, we can actually provide more, you know, head in type on street parking, actual parking spaces on the southern uh, pod here. And so we would actually propose to hey, keep David, that. David, could you hold on one second? Sure. Uh, Abby, are, are you able to get that up? Are you having trouble there? If I share my screen, would you be able to see that? Can, can she? Should be, you should be able to. But that would be great. Let me let me, let me try. Okay, good. So it's not just you. Let me know if you can see that. Oh, there you go. Excellent. Thanks, Dave. We can so see I'm, it. I'm just going to I'm going to zoom out to give you an idea. So it's a long, narrow property. It's deep, uh, but it has a large area in the middle, and kind of all the area along the northeastern side that's all floodplain um so like i said we have two pods one that's kind of up along lincoln highway and then one in almost toward the very back of the property that accesses off of park drive um and so going back to it we would actually propose we'll zoom in here um for the southern pod that's out along lincoln highway we would like to keep the park or i'm sorry the roads at 24 feet wide because just by the way, this is all configured. We can get more parking, more parking spaces <laughs> head in off of the road, like actual true parking spaces than we could if we allowed parking on one side of the street. Because just by the way these units are all set up, there's very little room on the street to actually park because a lot of it is driveways as with most townhome communities. Um, so the front would be 24 foot wide uh, with, with a, a decent amount of head in parking spaces. And then the northern section, we do have some head-in spaces. We have 10 head-in spaces, but we would also propose that to be 28 foot wide, as Ray suggested. So we could allow, uh, you know, there would probably be, it's a smaller smaller grouping of townhomes. But we'd probably have four or five or six spaces available along the road, maybe even a little bit more. Um, so it's kind of a combination, Kristen, of what, what Ray has suggested. I think it works out best that way and does provide the maximum number of of overflow parking okay and that was again we you know we'd want the board to weigh in on that it, it, we just assumed that parking would be somewhat of an issue and a concern so it's really up to the board on whether you know they think that i i would want ray or the mainly ray and maybe the civil engineer just to comment on does a 24 foot wide road create any other issues even if no parking is that sufficient for snow plow equipment emergency yeah. vehicles that kind of thing and I think I think we have room to be flexible either way. Um, I just felt that there's very little room for for on street parking in that southern pod. So why artificially make it 24 foot wide? But but I think I think we can work with the township either way on that. Okay. And one other thing before I forget, because I know it's really important and near to dear to Abby, um, she reminded us today that the township has a concept plan for a Beaver Creek Trail that would part of it would run around, excuse me, along the rear of the property boundary here uh, near the Valley Run. And we did reach out to the applicant today to indicate, you know, would you be willing to allow that trail to go across the back of the property there? And Mr. Kahn and Mr. Givens is on the call tonight, um, both said that that shouldn't be an issue. There, there's sufficient land. There, there weren't proposing any development there. So that's one of the details we can work through as part of the land development. Typically, there's a there is a requirement in your SALDO that they provide public recreational land. So this would really be able to achieve that that ordinance section if they were to provide a public trail across the rear of the property boundary. So that is something that it's shown on the screen right now in purple, um, and the applicant is willing to work with the township on that. Thank you, Kristen. Uh, Ray, you, you look like you were about to make a comment. Well, I was just going to weigh in on that. So when, when we're talking about roads, uh, our ordinance requires a minimum of 24 foot when it's a two-way drive aisle. Um, but our, several years ago, probably 10 or more years ago, we adopted an ordinance that all roadways, all public roadways have to be uh, fire apparatus access roads. Uh, so we use the fire code to determine those minimum requirements for width when it comes to parking. So 24 foot is more than fine as long as there's no parking on the street. 
Um, it has to be a minimum of 28 to have parking on one side, and it has to be greater than 32 feet to have parking on both sides. And at each townhome, is there parking in the driveway? Is there a garage on these townhomes? They're, they're narrower, so they each have a driveway and a single car garage. Okay, so they can hold up to two cars themselves? Correct. Okay. And um, Dave, where are you now with, and obviously I know the, change, the plan will change a bit, but where are you with overflow parking? So forget the driveway and the garage. How many overflow spaces are you proposing? So we've kind of roughly calculated, including a few on-street parking, uh, where it makes sense to be around like 43, I think, overflow parking spaces. Okay. So that, that kind of calculates out to be about one for every two and a half units. And would would both of these be, a, would they be one, would they operate as one development or would it be marketed as two separate developments? Well, I think they would be one. It'd be one, okay. Yeah. Can I ask how many um, uh, townhouses are you proposing to put on this? I believe train? I believe it's one hundred and three, and that would be like the absolute minimum. We obviously know once we would get into engineering and stormwater that that number may, you know, fluctuate down a little bit. But one hundred and three is the absolute maximum number. Maximum. You said minimum. You mean maximum? I'm sorry. Maximum. Yes. Yep. It, it would not be more than one hundred and three. And I mentioned in my opening remarks that there was, you, I believe you met the 50% open space that we would currently require. Do you know what the open space is on this plan? Mm. It's, well, it's more than 50%. I'm not sure if you can see that screen, but th there's a lot of land that is basically floodplain or riparian buffer. Uh, it's very uh, constrained in that regard. So I we I just have written down here that it's greater than fifty percent, so I don't know that exact number. Okay. And as far as the width of the road, and I'm sorry, maybe I'm just repeating something, but it, are we are we set on twenty four feet or twenty eight feet? Twenty four feet. They're proposing on the front section off Lincoln Highway okay. because there would be no parking allowed there, and they're providing additional off street parking for overflow. In the rear off of Park Drive, 28 feet okay. with a, a couple pods of parking on one side to accomplish the additional overflow parking. Okay. Thank you for clarification. Yeah, hi, Dave. Mark Evans here. How are you? Good. How are you? Good, good. I, I can only ever speak for myself, but uh, I believe this is something that uh, we want for the greater good. <laughs> I definitely want to work with you on this. I think it's a great opportunity for Cal and it's a great opportunity for you to help us establish the new face of Lincoln Highway. The uh, I can say that the zoning subgroup had uh, discussed some of this stuff and this a lot of the changes that you're suggesting are things that we were already looking at in the new zoning for townhome. So um, I, I think it's this could be great. It could be. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions from uh, residents here in the township building? Oh, we have two. Chris, come on up to the, uh, the mic. Just name and address, please. Good evening. Chris Parr, 582 Lloyd Avenue. Hi, Chris. Hi. Hello. Hi. Um, can you clarify again the driveway? Is it a single driveway or is it a double driveway? It'd be a single wide driveway that essentially would handle one car, but they would also have a single garage. I that's my biggest concern because you may have these pods mm. that people can walk all the way down the street, but I think you're going to run into the same issue some of the other developments have had where they can't park on the street. And I know. In our case, we end up having to double our driveway because when you're doing back-to-back -back cars, mm -hmm. trying to get in and out, and if you have two people per home, you generally have two cars. Mm -hmm. So that is a concern of mine. Um, how do you get in, because I, I'm sorry, I cannot see this print. Um, how do you get in and out of the development? Well, so th there's, there's two access points, one, 
Well, I say, say there's three access points. The the front pod on Lincoln Highway will have somewhat of a small boulevard entrance. Um, it's actually a very narrow frontage on Lincoln Highway. So, you know, uh, uh, there may be some changes to this just once we start dealing with PennDOT. Um, but right now it's kind of a single boulevard entrance for the front pod. Um, the rear is basically a, a U shape or a backwards C, I guess you could say, a horseshoe shape. Um, where it's just a single loop drive coming off of Park Drive, looping around and then coming back out onto Park Drive. Hmm. Okay. Um, are these going to be rentals or owned? That's a good question. And I do not know off the top of my head, but I believe they'll be for sale. Because I sure wouldn't like to see these to be rentals. Yeah, I, I'm. I am almost positive they will be uh, you know, it's typically sold like most other townhomes. Um, it's, it's kind of a Ryan homes, simple, more simple design, more affordable, um, that they've been doing a lot, uh, recently. And, and I believe they're, they sell them. You said Ryan homes. Uh, that's, that's what they're, that's what they're based off of right now. That's who's, who's looking at this. When you say affordable, what's affordable? Unfortunately, I don't know. I'm just the engineer. So I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't usually get into that. You can ask the right. uh, the developer that at some point. Okay. All right. I have more questions, but I think I've asked enough. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thanks. Tony, got any questions? Up to the mic, please. Hello, Tony Desario, 251 Loomis Avenue. Kristen Camp said something about the trail. Did you ever get a grant for that trail? Abby, do you have a question on that? I, not that section. Yeah, we're not to that section yet. We're working on the first section in Lloyd Park. And we, we have a grant for the engineering. So we're just still doing the engineering of the so first Abby, section. How much is the, how much is the uh, trail, the rest of the trail then? 20 years from now is yeah, probably we, the best place We won't know the exact that. cost until they do the engineering for each section, if that makes sense. Yeah. All right. We're going a bit at a time because it is expensive. Traffic on that highway right there. I mean, I sat there tonight up by the uh, gas station. Tonight backed up. The traffic backs up bad. Um, there's 100, what, you 100, 100 homes, you said? 100 well, it, it's back. split. Yeah. Right. I believe there's 40 70. towards the front well, and the rest are in units. the back. Hundred or something. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of traffic going to be coming out of there. That's the only uh, exit is Route 30. On Park the front Avenue. section, yes. And where's the other one? Exit two. Off Avenue. of Park Avenue. Park Drive. Park Drive. Park Drive to Geo Geo Carlson. There'd be two ways to to exit there. There'll be a, their entrance right to Geo Carlson. Mm -hmm. right. I don't think we're really talking about a, the exact a real exact plan at this point this, what's here is just a first sketch well, idea I want to plan what we're talking here. about is making sure that the zoning is appropriate and that it would work for the township so we're not well, voting why don't on they any keep plan. route 30 businesses like it used to be instead of housing well um i think we've got enough midas <laughs> so. and pizza but now the new, new concept now is to have residential along with yeah. the business in that section because we have the trailway or I'm sorry the uh, the train uh, service as well as bus service along yeah. 30. So it's good to take advantage of that. Is there going to be a traffic study done before you make a decision? Usually it is, yes. Always. Can you explain yeah. the traffic study to me, Mark? Yeah. We're not there yet, Mr. We're not there yet, Tony. We're we're very much in the design of the, just the ordinance language. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you, Tony. Tony. Thank you. I think I did see a hand raised. Yeah. Cheryl. He's rejoining. Oh, you're muted. Do another try, Cheryl. Yes, that better? There you go. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I don't have questions about the plan. We're a long way from the plan, but I do have questions about the zoning. Okay. You're proposing a maximum of 103 total units. And if I'm understanding you correctly, 
this is not taking the R4, R4 zoning that's presently on part of the property and spreading it across the whole property. This is a complete change in the zoning code. Is that correct? They, they, we're not there yet. We're, we're trying to figure out the best way to accomplish getting this plan to something that can be done on this parcel. So they had a, they had a proposed way to do it, which I don't think is the best way. We're still discussing it with their lawyer. I just wanted to make sure from a concept that this is something the board would like to see happen. And then we'll, we'll deal with the, there's many different ways we can skin this cat and we need to figure out the best way to go about it. Well, here's my problem with the skin the cat routine. And we've skinned the cat routine numerous times in this township and ultimately not necessarily to our benefit. I would question whether this, if you're going to rezone this parcel in particular for the benefit of Ryan, then I would wonder why that isn't spot zoning. Well, that's exactly the way their ordinance is put together. I didn't, I thought that exact problem. And that's not what we want to do, Ms. Spalding. That's why I said okay. that, that we're looking at it from a more global perspective. The board had gone, spent two years on a task force trying to put together a new zoning amendment that addressed some of the uses along Lincoln Highway. So what we're doing is is going to be fairly consistent with what part part of the you know zoning update that, that we're still working on. There, you know, as Mr. Evans said, there's a desire of the board to allow residential development along Lincoln Highway. So it's oh, I'm, I'm not questioning that. I, I don't think anybody wants to see anything but residential done on the property. But I would say to you that I would not, I would not, and you as a lawyer cannot support a spot zoning for this. However, that's right. That being said, if what they're proposing is something that makes sense for the township overall, then it deserves to be put in the new zoning code, which we're developing. Right. That and is that's a whole nother question for me, which is, and I understand they're going to want to move quickly and all that good jazz, but if we're going to develop a new zoning code for township townhouses and you know that's going to go into this new ordinance then i would like to see that wait for the uh inclusion in that new zoning code which you are in the process of, of of approving but is not approved well mr cohen and the cohen family is not willing to wait and as they mentioned to us they have a buyer that wants to continue the junkyard use which they have every right to do so okay. it's the board's desire to not see that happen and to fast forward this process. Our, our suggestion to the board is to not, whatever this developer, and by the way, the Ryan Homes is not a done deal. So nobody should get in their minds that this is already sold okay. to Ryan Homes. We're not there yet. So the, the Cohen family as the owner of the property has come to the township and petitioned the, the board to try to change the zoning. What we have suggested, Ray Stackhouse and myself have suggested to the board is a lot of what they're proposing is what you were planning on doing anyway across the board along Lincoln Highway. So let's not just single out this track of ground. It doesn't have any unique circumstances, I think, that warrant different multifamily development standards. Let's apply those across all of where you were going to allow multifamily development along Lincoln Highway. So let that's, me what, be sure. that, that's what we're trying to work through. Okay, so let me be sure I understand what you just said. Um, you are not suggesting, and that we accept as a township that this property be zoned specifically for this property since clearly that's spot zoning. And rather than that, whatever is developed on this property, which is acceptable for this property, will be applied across all the properties like it along Lincoln Highway. Is that correct? Whatever, yeah, whatever ultimately the board decides should be the district and-, and Okay. Uh, yeah. But in, that, in that case, I would say to the commissioners, that they need to look closely, not not just at this particular property and this plan, but as Ray open, you know, Ray suggests that there are some issues with the widths of roads, whatever. I don't know. That's a plan issue. But that being said, I think you, they, the commissioners and Ray and the township needs to look closely at the ordinance that they accept on this property because they're now going to have to live with that at other places. That's right. Well, that's why we're. That's yes. what we're planning okay. to do. I, I just yeah. want to be sure we all understand what we're, what we're, what, yep. what is being asked. They're not just asking for new zoning on this property. They're going to influence the zoning across everything that's done on Route 30. And in that yep. way, the township people need to know what's being done. They need to be careful. That's all I'm saying. I, I should just say this. Uh, what I think what Miss Camp said a few times, and I think I said as well, they're not influencing us. 
what they are asking for is very similar to what That's the fine. subgroup has already been talking about making for Lincoln Highway. That would be Thorndale Village Center, I believe, uh, right where that is. And then there's Thorn, uh, Lincoln Highway uh, East and Lincoln West. Highway West, which <coughs> each have a slightly different, but that would be sitting in the Thorndale Village Center. That's fine, Mark. I'm, I'm not suggesting, I'm just saying, pointing out that, you know, it, it appeared like this, it appeared like this was being presented as a one-off and it's really not. Well, the way they presented it, it was because they only care be. about their. We property. know that can't be true, <laughs> right? Well, we I know mean, that's not possible. No, and, and the ordinance that they put together addressed it narrow, narrow scope for their purposes, and that's, that's why fine. I said we need to make sure it's a, a broader scope. That's fine. Okay, I accept that. All right, thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. Thank you. Did we have any other hands raised, Mr. DeYoung? Well, again, um, not really to put a wrinkle into this, but I don't know how long it's been a junkyard, but I imagine several decades. And I don't know how they're going to pass the phase one, phase two, and probably a phase three audit on people being able to live there. That's going to be a Herculean task that if it gets approved and eventually things happen because of the township approving it, is there some liability to the township for having that no. property? Uh, yeah, Ms. Homes Gant, be built. can you answer that? Let me finish. No. So, homes be built. Can I finish the sentence? Okay, I'm sorry. So, uh, homes be built. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, what was that, Martin? Martin? I'm okay, just saying going. it's going to be very hard for it to pass the uh, EPA phase one, phase two, and phase three audits before you build houses there. And Mark, if we allow it to, once it happens, does the township retain any, uh, you know, um, liability mm -hmm. by allowing this? Not that I, I, everything else is great, but you've got to understand there's got to be a lot of contaminants in that clear ground. Well, I, I don't think you know that. Camp? Yeah, can you direct that? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I think that's, I think that's an assumption. I don't think anybody has the information on that. Allowing somebody to develop something because the zoning code permits it does not mean that there's other laws that they don't have to adhere to. Town Township has no jurisdiction over the DEP and the EPA environmental standards. That's something that buyer beware. They have to go get their own phase one, phase two. Nothing in our ordinances. Again, the zoning code is just something that allows them to develop it in a certain manner if they get if it comes back that you know it is contaminated and needs cleanup then the state through the act two process will be in they'll, they'll be just like hills of thorndale woods and dave gibbons is the engineer on that he, he knows all too well what it means to have an act two site and it doesn't mean that it can't be developed it just means that it has to be remediated before it is appropriate for residential development but to answer your question there is no liability for the township Okay, thank you. You're welcome, and Mark. Good concern there, Mark. I appreciate it. All right, any other comments? All right, uh, Ms. Camp, uh, this is all just informational. We're, uh, yeah. We'll discuss with you and, uh, and Ray. Yes, if you, again, just want to make sure, you know, you're looking at it, you're seeing the, the plan. I want to make sure you have the opportunity to ask questions. You can um, examine the plan in more detail. What we'll do is work with the applicant's council and put the ordinance together that addresses you know, some of the issues we talked about, does it on a, a, a broader scope, and then present that back to you at a future meeting. Sounds good. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Dave thank you, thank you, Dave, Kristen. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Have a nice holiday weekend. Thank thank you, you too. too. Thanks. Bye-bye. Ms. -bye. Camp, that, that uh, finishes off your section. That's correct. correct. Okay. Yes. If you don't need to stick around, uh, have a great weekend. Thank you. You too, everybody. Take care. Thanks. Bye. Enjoy. Stay in. Uh, next uh, on the agenda, we have ordinance and resolutions uh, for consideration. Uh, I did let... that tabled. Yeah, I, I spoke to... Well, I text 
Josh, he's on uh, vacation, so I told him we will table the uh, uh, the food truck. We'll be ready to roll at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, since uh, since he had some input. Uh, next, for consideration, adopt resolution 2023-19. This adds a fee for the tort civil claim request from the uh, Count Township Police Department. Chief, you want to enlighten us on this? Or is that part of the... Uh, so there was, there was yeah there was a law that passed within the last year and we've received guidance from the district attorney's office as far as the fee structure goes what it does it is it allows victims of crimes to obtain copies of reports um, not for criminal purposes but in order to file a claim against um, their assailant, whoever the defendant was in the case. Mm -hmm. um, and that involves obtaining police reports, um, notes, video, anything related to the case. Um, it's, it's a new law that just passed within the last year. Are there standard fees or are, there, are these fees would have to be adopted that's by the, the proposed so those those fees currently aren't aren't in the township fee schedule it's a brand new fee structure and again it's the same fee structure that the district attorney's office used and okay. um, or uses and recommends that all county police departments use so that it's consistent throughout the county okay pretty clean cut commissioners any questions all right residents any in the township building None at this time. Any in uh, Zoom world? If there's no further questions, entertain a motion to uh, accept, uh, adopt uh, resolution 2023-19. So moved. So second. moved. Moved by Commissioner Kennedy, second by Commissioner Tendero. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion's good, 5-0. Thank you, Chief. Next one. Consideration uh, for a uh, to adopt resolution 2023-20 to adopt specific guidelines and application for an honorary street name designation. Uh, Abby, you did a great job putting that together, by the way. Looks good. Thank you. Yes. yes. Yeah, that <laughs> was nice. <laughs> Long time coming. Yes. All right, so commissioners, any questions on this? No. All right, residents, any questions? None in the township building? Any <laughs> Zoom world? I really... I really don't like it when it zooms I'm in sorry. like that. I'm <laughs> sorry. It's possessed tonight. It, it was possessed uh, <laughs> Monday night. I thought night. I fixed it, but apparently I didn't. I'm it's sorry. No, yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, it was re rebooting itself Monday night at the uh, CTMA meeting. It's being very strange. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll live. So moved. So moved. Second. Moved uh, by Commissioner Evans. Second by Commissioner Kennedy. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Motion's good. 4-0. And the last one is the uh, fee, 20, uh, resolution 2023-21 to add a fee for the honorary street name designation. I believe 75. it was $75. Questions, uh, commissioners? Yeah. Questions from residents? So is, is that fee for the application or for the, for the actual sign. sign? It's for everything. So we figured the is cost of the sign plus the administration and the public works, you know, hanging it up. That's good. That's All right, nice. no, no questions from uh, Zoom? All right. <clears throat> With uh, no further questions, entertain a motion to accept. So moved. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Evans, second by Commissioner Tendero. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Motion's good, 4-0. All right, Jane. Mm -hmm. Get that all written out. Yeah. That'll be nice. All right. Next, uh, we have Finance Department, Ms. Swan. Finance uh, report. About the minutes from last year. Did I miss it? No. No. Okay. Just amend it. <laughs> uh, your finance report should be in your packet. I had a chance to review that. If there's any questions, I can try to answer. Otherwise, I'll move right in. It looks good. I, I do not have any questions. Commissioners, any questions? No. Nope. All right. Uh, so we are back to the um, uh, request for the board's consideration to authorize uh, 
uh, the renewal, or excuse me, not the renewal, the reestablishment of the PPO plan for exempt employees. Uh, this again is uh, follows along with uh, the majority of the consortium of municipalities um, for this plan. And um, basically, again, just asking for a reinstatement of, of that plan, uh, health care for exempt employees, which are uh, non-uniform, non-union. Okay, and, and I know uh, Mr. DeYoung had some questions about it earlier, but it, just to clarify, this is just a renewal of the same policy that the Correct. staff already has? Yes. Okay, continuation. Okay, I'm going to make sure. Commissioners, any questions on this? No. Moved. Uh, questions from residents? Under this time. Uh, do we go out for bid every now and then? No, see. we use Divot, um, which Divot. is a trust, and they handle, um, they have different departments. Uh, we use them for our health care and our workers' comp. Uh, we use another um, company consulting firm for our liability. Um, but we do go back and forth every two years or so um, just to compare, you know, the product from, uh, for, for each of the three, actually. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll probably go probably look again next year 2024 um, and just you know put the feelers out for all three of the packages okay um, and with divot we do get um, a, a rebate um, and it, it's a trust so the premiums that we pay uh, get placed into um, I guess an investment package as well uh, and at the end of the year we usually get around 30,000 back uh, they also give us a small grant for um, risk factors, uh, panic buttons, cameras, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So uh, the money that we pay in premiums, for, for, you know, the township pays, um, you get, you do get paid back in some kind of an investment, which is, which is nice. Uh, we belong to two of the trusts right now. So we get, I believe, 3% of our premium uh, mm -hmm. back if we do decide to join um, the liability, property and liability, that would be increased to 4%. So each tier adds another layer of, uh, of rebate funds. Okay. And this just renews January 1st? I'm sorry? This renews January 1st? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Yes, Annual this wouldn't calendar. start until January 1st. Okay. Yes. We have a hand raised. Yes, Mark. Quick, very quick question. Just how, how much has the um, premium gone up, up this year from last year? This year from last year, it went up 7.8%. Uh, so on the usual in medical fields. So. I, I'm sorry, I, I missed that comment, Mark. No, I just said it's not unusual in the medical fields. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. It's kind of standard. Okay. Thank you, Mark. All right. Uh, well, if no further questions, entertain a motion to authorize Ms. Swan. So to moved. Renew. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner uh, Evans. Second by Commissioner Kennedy. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Seems good. Four zero. Thank you. Next, um, what do you have? I believe three, four. I guess three and four. Um, next on the mm -hmm. agenda kind of go together. Uh, we have two vehicles, one from the codes department and one from the police department. Um, and due to the mileage, uh, we'd like to just inform the board that we are transferring the vehicles themselves from codes to um, the police department and vice versa with the other one. Uh, it just makes more sense that way with the mileage that the police put on um, and codes department that uh, um, we can we can do that to, to kind of save the uh, one of the one of the vehicles. Um, with that being said, we do wish to ask the board um, to be able to put uh, one of the police ve or actually two of the police vehicles um, on municipid for sale, um, and that will lead into my next topic 
um, we are requesting, and I think we touched base on this last meeting, uh, we'd like to, to uh, authorize, uh, have the board authorize the police department to purchase a vehicle for the CID department, uh, which I believe we plan on um, adding another individual into that position so they would need a vehicle as well so this kind of all is not snowballing but but one action um, actually helps out the other uh, with the sale of um, the two police vehicles we hope to make about 13,000 that would also offset um, the CID vehicle that we'd like to purchase as well we are still waiting for that $75,000 uh, grant that goes towards the police department vehicles uh, we're hoping by um, late October early November to get that fingers crossed uh, so that will also help offset um, I think the only thing we would need is just uh, the approval of the board to put those two vehicles on uh, municipid so we can do that one first and then uh, the second request would be to um, purchase the CID vehicle uh, which by the way and, and chief maybe you can um, elaborate uh, elaborate on this I don't think we're looking for a specific uh, intense vehicle um, if we can find something uh, left over on the lot um, you know that would definitely be very useful as well so chief if you have anything to add so Mr. Stackhouse yeah. needed a vehicle. We have a 2018 Ford Escape that we bought several years ago when mm -hmm. we had three detectives. Um, so rather than just have that vehicle sit, um, he's got a 10-year-old vehicle that we're going to put on municipal. We already have a vehicle that's uh, listed or ready to be listed on municipal for one of the vehicles that we replaced in our fleet mm -hmm. um, over the summer. Right now I'm down to one detective. By the end of the year, I we hope to install a second detective. At one time, we had three. Um, so with transferring that escape to codes, um, we have one one vehicle in criminal investigation. Right? We'll need a second at some point. Okay. Um, so basically, it's just kind of a transfer of funds, capital funds, that Ray would have otherwise used purchase a vehicle outright mm -hmm. but this escape mm -hmm. is the size that he would need and meets his needs, that fills his needs. it's mm -hmm. such a small vehicle for the amount of equipment that our detectives carry camera equipment lighting equipment all the things they need to process a scene so <clears> over <throat> the next couple months between now and we install the second detective we're going to look for a vehicle that is big enough but obviously fiscally responsible purchase considering um, it, it wasn't something that we really had planned on or budgeted for in 2023 so that's mm -hmm. kind of where we are. Yeah. so so Ray gets the leftovers okay. why not well you ought to see what I'm inheriting for the time being. <laughs> 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 it's that the, the coach department has a 2014 Ford uh, has never been no. Yeah. And this was perfect, perfect timing. That's a twenty eighteen, but it only has eleven thousand dollars. No last. Okay. Good thing. I don't have an issue with that. Uh, uh, commissioners, any questions? We can just um, go through a few of them here then. If no, the other question I had there was okay. some indication that we needed to also include for Mr. Swan or the chief to sign these documents that are necessary to mm -hmm. move these projects forward. Mm -hmm. And I would suggest just uh, if we can have both of you sign it. Maybe since two we don't signatures. Have a township manager. Just have two signatures just to notify that it's done. Yeah. Okay. Residents, any questions? None here at the township building. Any in Zoom? Uh, first one will be uh, entertain a motion to authorize Ms. Swan and, and the chief to transfer and sign all paperwork in relation to the uh, police criminal investigation department, the CID vehicle transfer to the building and life safety department. Second. 
some of the vote. Moved by Commissioner Evans, second by Commissioner Kennedy. All in favor? Aye. 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 Second is to authorize uh, the police department to order order a CID vehicle to replace the vehicle transfer to uh, Building Life and Safety Department and authorize Ms. Swan and the chief to sign all documents. So moved. Second. Moved. moved by Commissioner Evans, second by Commissioner Kennedy. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion's good, 4-0. And the last one was uh, for consideration to authorize Ms. Swan to put two, uh, the two police vehicles on municipal for sale. So moved. Second. second. Moved by Commissioner Kennedy, second by Commissioner Evans. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Next we have a uh, check run. Checks uh, 50,625 to 50,727 with a manual check of 294. Any questions, commissioners, on this? No. No? Questions yeah. from residents? None of this time. No questions. Uh, entertain a motion to approve check run. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Tendera, second by Commissioner Kennedy. All in favor? Say aye. 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 All right. Ms. Swan, thank you so much. Much appreciated. Okay, minutes to approve. We do have the July 13th uh, Board of Commissioner minutes to approve. Any questions? If not, entertain a motion. It, it changed again today, so I, 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 I just, no. I'm not going to keep taking it down the road, but I, I don't think I can. All right. Okay. Entertain a motion to uh, approve. So moved. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Kennedy. Second by Commissioner Tendero. All in favor? Say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. aye. No. <laughs> Whatever I have to say. Okay. Three to one. All right. And uh, minutes from the August tenth Board of Commissioner uh, minutes. Questions? Comments? I did have have questions. The uh, you know, when I, when I was reading it, the opening comments were really watered down, you know, lost the color mm. of the meeting and, and the message being put out there. Mm -hmm. um, they were approved by board to go that way. I thought that we lose a lot by watering them down. I would like to see them reverted to what they were because I always provide the verbatim. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, why don't we uh, we'll table that uh, for further discussion? Entertain uh, motion to uh, accept the receipt of the planning commission minutes from July 18th. Senators, any questions on those? Right, entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Evans. Second by Commissioner Tendero. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Motion's good. Four zero. Uh, director's report. This is the meat and potatoes. We'll start out uh, with the chief. So on behalf of a resident, uh, President Mullen requested the police department to conduct a traffic study at the intersection of North Lloyd Avenue and Geo Carlson to determine if a multi-way stop was warranted at that location. Specific criteria for traffic studies are contained in the U.S. Department of Transportation Highway Administration Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices. Mouthful. Uh, Multi-way stop controls can only be implemented if supported by the following. Um, traffic volume, which means 300 or more vehicles uh, over an eight-hour period, or traffic and traffic crashes, uh, which is five or more in a 12-month period. So the study met the criteria for volume, but not for crashes. And the only way that we could deviate from the current regulatory signage would be to justify why, based on the data, and that has to be done in accordance with Department of Transportation criteria. Um, so at this time, that intersection does not warrant a three-way stop. With that said, um, southbound traffic on Lloyd is three times the volume of northbound traffic, and I would imagine with the amount of development in that end of the township, particularly up on Route 322 with 400 units going in, that mm, yeah. that could continue yeah. to mm. impact traffic on Lloyd. So we'll continue to monitor it, um, mm -hmm. and if we need to revisit this, we could do it again in the future. 
but for the time being, the, the data just doesn't support any changes at that location. So, so would um, I guess I, I know Stephen is here uh, from from that area, and I know he'll yeah. want to make a comment about this. But what what as far as one hundred and four Chester Court, I'm, I'm disappointed in the results of the survey. Uh, you know, I've been a resident there for twenty eight years. The traffic is it's a death trap as far as I'm concerned. I I was trying to make a left turn onto Carlson from Lloyd a few years ago and I uh, was in a very severe accident. Someone plowed into me. Uh, the uh, traffic is especially heavy at this time of year and also one of the problems we have is the cornfield. You can't see traffic coming around. Uh, so uh, as far as I'm concerned as a resident, uh, I'm disappointed. I think we I mean, I'd be willing to kick in for the price of one stop sign. All we need is two more <laughs> to make a three-way stop. It, it, it's 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 a traffic hazard. If you don't live there, uh, then maybe you can't appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And I think my comments are backed up by most of the people in, in our development. We've got probably, I don't know, maybe a seven, 800 residents uh, along that strip of Geo Carlson, including Beaver Run Knoll and the single family home. And the traffic just gets worse and worse. So again, I desperately would uh, plead for a freeway stop. That's my comment. Thank you, and, and I'm a resident there too, and I agree. I see the way, I, I, I'm a resident there too. I see the way people drive. And I yeah. see how bad it is. Well, what else but I we, understand what else we the situation do we, do we, that we, we have with the state. God forbid, do we need yeah. someone seriously hurt there? I mean, what's what's the cost yeah. of two stop signs, for God's sake? I well, think that we'd approve well, them. It's not up to us. Right. It's, it's, not, the it's state. not a discretionary thing or an opinion thing. Um, we have to do we, It's not a township rule. I mean, this, this criteria isn't determined by mm -hmm. the township, by the police department not even by the state vehicle code, it's a federal highway requirement. And when we do these studies, we really don't have any choice but to abide by the data. Um, we, we capture data there between August 9th and August 18th. Um, and in addition to the study, you know, we looked at speed um, because we've had this discussion in here many times mm -hmm. over the years, speed. The posted speed limit is based on the 85th percentile speed, which means um, whatever 85% of the vehicles traveling on a particular roadway, whatever speed they travel at is typically the speed that traffic engineers utilize when they determine the posted speed limit for a highway. And actually the data that we captured northbound and southbound was consistent with the posted speed of 35. I mean, that mm. northbound, the speed was 34.08 and southbound it was 36 and change so right it's right in the ballpark of that 35 mm -hmm. mile an hour speed limit and again um there's intersections that i have an opinion about too and i, I share your concern trust me um, but when we do these traffic studies we have to live with the data and unfortunately i, I know you're disappointed but um, we'll continue to enforce the speed limit and we'll continue to monitor <clears throat> traffic um, we do the best we can with the amount of officers we have. We, you know, we spend a lot of time on on Lloyd Avenue oh, yeah, uh, doing do. doing speed enforcement and monitoring traffic and placing speed timing devices and the portable radar uh, 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 traffic trailers that we have. So we'll continue to do that. And again, as the development increases and traffic increases, we'll continue to monitor that intersection. Well, I with, with all due respect, Chief, I guarantee the traffic is going to increase, especially with this uh, my town development that's going up right around the corner. That's the one I was alluding to. I I, I don't mm -hmm. I I'm a, I'm agreeing with you. I'm I'm not surmising it's going to increase. I'm sure it's going to increase. Yeah. Okay. I have a well, again, question. I'm disappointed, and uh, we'll make a note of this in our uh, Beaver Run Knoll newsletter, and continue to push for two stop signs. I mean, you know. For, Again, I'd be willing to kick in. In fact, I'll pay for both of them. How's that? Other than that, have a nice night. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Steve. Chief. Chief, this is a stupid question. Is it out of the question for anyone to put in a, just before that curve, a sign that says slow? 
you know, the yellow slow on the curve signs. Is that something we would need to get uh, study passed for? I'm Ray, as far as traffic studies go and traffic engineering, it, it, uh, I can certainly ask our traffic engineer and have him look at the, what the regulations are on a municipal road okay. for that type of yeah. sign. I don't think that's regulated by the vehicle code. I don't need, that's why I asked. Yeah. So I can certainly ask That'd him. That would be great. To look yeah, I mean, the high end of speed in there coming around that curve. It's, and and, and you have people on bicycles and people walking and uh -huh. people out running. And I know your hands are tied and, and you do the best job in the world. Well, we know when all these roads were built, it wasn't with development in mind. No. no it, was, it was a, a horse-drawn sleigh. <laughs> They've all become connector roads yeah. from the bypass, and people drive on them like they're still on the bypass. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I just had a discussion with a resident about Humpton Road who asked the same, hey, we never, like, where, where are the police? And when I looked at the numbers in the last 18 months, we issued 101 traffic citations on Humpton Road. Um, which is more than any other road. I guarantee it's more than any other road yeah. in the township. Um, but when we're not there, people speed. Oh, yeah. You know, 101 citations, and that doesn't include <clears throat> written warnings yeah. and, and the rest of the vehicle stops we made. But again, when we're not sitting there, people speed. You're everywhere. And you even can. when we are, they do. That's why we wrote 101 <laughs> traffic citations. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, sir. They do. And Chief, when when would be the next time that we could actually do a study on that on that area? Well, we'll keep an eye on it. it the the criteria is five. We we know the volumes there, right? Mm -hmm. the, it's five crashes in a year. So if we ever get to that point, and we monitor crashes all the time, because that's where we usually try to ensure our officers are paying more attention, because that that's really the goal for selective traffic enforcement to reduce accidents or mitigate the potential for accidents. So we'll, we'll continue to watch that intersection. And again, we're, we're cognizant of the fact that there's 400 units going in just north of the bypass off 322. So mm -hmm. we'll keep an eye on it. You, okay. you have my word on that. Thank you, Chief. Anything else in your report? Yeah, just one other thing. If, if anyone isn't aware, it's been on the Daily Local, it's been reported all day that there was a prisoner escape from Chester yes. County Prison. Um, last sighting was in the Unionville area this afternoon. Hopefully it doesn't happen, but should there be a credible sighting near the township, we have the reverse 911 system to alert residents. Mm -hmm. So that's something that we would utilize but if you remember the last meeting I attended we had a whole bunch of cars that were unlocked and items stolen from right. and open garages mm -hmm. during the night that mm -hmm. items were stolen from with a convicted murder on the loose now is not the time to leave your garage open at night yeah. or your car <laughs> um, I, I say it or, kind of tongue in cheek but um, yeah. no, shouldn't any time but not 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 with a potential public safety threat of this magnitude in the area. Uh, yeah. Unionville is 20 minutes away, but it's still yeah. close enough for it's enough. Um, precaution. So I just wanted to mention that. Thank you. That's all I have. Chief. All right. Next we have a uh, fire department, Chief Taylor. Thank yes. Chris. Oh, we have a question. Hey, come on up here, Chris. Thank you. Chris Parr, 582 Lloyd Avenue. Hi, Chris. Hi. Hi, Chief. The question is in regards, I, I want to say thank you very much. I understand there was someone that asked to have those speed detectors put up, but it was fantastic when they were up because I actually went out on my lawn and I watched for 15, 20 minutes, and it's amazing. Once they see that, they slow down. So, of oh. course, they're going speed limit. But my question is, and I guess it would be to Ray as well, can you put something like that up on a state road? Well, that, again, that's what we would have to have some discussions about, yeah. um, you know, whether we can or we can't. Yeah. 
So even with something like that, because of it being a state road, anything like that has to be approved. Is that what it is? I, I, I was just curious. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because I, I've seen um, in other townships, not so much around here, but they have those, uh, they're solar and they automatically will tell you if you're going too fast or speed limit. And it's, it was quite evident that only one person, I think it was out of 20, one person flew by it, but everyone else, the brake lights were going on as soon as they saw it. Mm -hmm. So I, it was interesting, but thank you very much for doing it. So thank we actually you. have one of those small portable signs mounted to a speed limit sign on Municipal Drive southbound. Oh, okay. So we only have one of those. We have two speed trailers. We try to move them around as often as we can. Um, but you can't imagine, I'm sure you can, I shouldn't say you can't imagine. Even with that flashing speed sign mm -hmm. mounted to a speed limit sign on Municipal, two blocks down the number of vehicles that we stopped inside it were just completely mm. ignored it once it. they got Passed it. Yep. Yeah. Oh, well. Well, for that brief period of time that they were going the speed limit, it was good. So thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you, And Chris. you have allowed us to use your front lawn before without rent for for placing the speed trailer. So, um, well, I, I wanted to thank you publicly for that. Because finding a spot sometimes is a challenge, you know, to, to safely locate one of those speed trailers where that's not going to get run over. Mm -hmm. uh, so thank you to the park family. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, Abby, I, I think I saw a hand raised. No. Not at this moment. Okay. Move on to the fire department. Chief Taylor, Patrick. How are you this evening? Hello. Good evening. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Uh, so good evening. Uh, just a couple of things from my report uh, to touch on, uh, since we've already mentioned my place numerous times. We know at the end of July through very beginning, or I'm sorry, the mid June through beginning of July, it was closed. Uh, actually, we were contacted by the uh, contractor right before it was opening to help kind of clean up the roadway and wash down. Um, otherwise, they'd probably still be out there with their garden hose. Mm -hmm. uh, so we spent a couple of our members did spend a couple hours with them to try and help expedite that process. Um, so we did help that contractor. Um, and I also, uh, the final thing I want to mention about the report is, uh, while we didn't have any significant, significant flooding, like what is currently happening with the hurricanes, there were a couple storms that we, we saw in July. Um, I, one particular, and I don't remember the date, but I want to give, uh, a, a shout out to public works, um, that had roads closed with barricades and things like that, preventing any sort of uh, water rescues and having uh, our personnel to go out. Um, I think maybe dispatched three times throughout the month for water rescues. Um, so again, thank you to Public Works and, and Huggins and Ray uh, for their efforts in that. Um, and it's kind of funny, I was sitting at South Bailey until Public Works could get there and I can't tell you how many times with my flashing lights on, cars still tried to go in front of me mm. in a roadway that you couldn't even see the uh, oh. walkway at the train station. I All I could do was shake my head. Mm. Um, but please do not drive through ro flooded roadways. I don't know how many times we can post that, say that. Yeah. Good reminder. Thank you. Unless you want a jet ski as a vehicle, yeah, I, I, I would not advise doing it um, but we do train in it so we, we are adverse and we're adding more folks and more equipment to the water rescue uh, repertoire but we don't really like to do it if we don't have to. Chief during Ida I was standing at the foot of the Lloyd Bridge which was underwater yep. waiting for the police the police were on their way trying to get that people to not it's and you know they were going on the grass person at me everything you know and the, the bridge was underwater <laughs> it's, I, like, mm -hmm. it's we get the same thing like i said i know it's tough there, there's to get to the south side of the township west bradford modena there's only certain ways you can take roadways flood i get that um but like i said we're not trying to do it to inconvenience everybody when we close roads we're doing it for everybody's safety um and then, of course, then when we have to go and rescue, we still get yelled at. 
we just can't win. And I'm yeah. sure Chief Elias can, can attest to that with his staff too. You're doing the right thing. Uh, you are the right. You're doing like a great said, job. I just wanted a so. little plug on that, especially now that hurricane season and, and fingers crossed. Yeah. We don't have to experience anything coming up. But that's all I have. Tomorrow is the two year anniversary. Two year. Yep. Yeah, sure is. Provida. Yeah. I'll remind you. So let's not have anything yeah. on the two-year no anniversary. More. I don't think we're supposed to. It's supposed to be nice. Nice weekend. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> hot. So, right. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Patrick. Stay safe. Look out. Nice. Uh, Manquist Fire uh, Company Ambulance EMS Chief Steward, Andrew. Hello. Welcome. Did you say Manquist EMS? Yeah, I, yeah I'm just reading right <laughs> off the... <laughs> Good evening, Commissioners. Hello. Uh, as you saw in our report, we were busy as always mm -hmm. uh, to put in perspective we were shy of, just shy of 550 calls for the entire coverage wow. area for the wow. month of uh, july so we Oof. we were a tad bit busy um thanks to abby uh for the props that we had in the count township newsletter we are promoting uh pretty heftily on our cpr our um, community cpr program and our car seat checks um we do have car seat technicians in-house seven days a week mm -hmm. uh during the hours of 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. and occasionally into the evening hours. Mm -hmm. um, so anyone that's looking for it, all you've got to do is call the fire station or email, and uh, we'd be more than happy to assist, especially those residents that uh, want to make sure that their car seats are installed correctly, properly. Okay. And for those that can't afford them, we do have car seats that are available for free, courtesy of uh, a few of the federal programs that exist out there. Um, so we, we've got a we've, we've got a plethora of them if anyone. Um, other than that, you'll see us at the Count Community Days in two two different spots, one the first aid station and the other at our display table, uh, where we're looking to have some activities, handouts, and goodies for the kids and some for the adults. Unless there's any questions, that's all I have. Commissioners, any questions? Gratitude. Abby, we have a question? Yes, Cheryl. Um, I was curious, um, I'm, I'm, first of all, 550 cells, uh, calls is just astounding. But anyway, I was curious if you had been told or had heard any, and I don't want to start rumors because, but it's a question that's asked on a constant basis. Has anybody heard anything more about, I mean, I know Brandywine Hospital is going to be taken for the VA thing, but there was, um, it appeared that Penn was going to build an emergency center not a hospital, but emergency center, either um, up at Brandywine Hospital or even possibly at the Lloyd Farm. Have you heard anything about that? I have not. No. no? Okay. Just wondered. All right. Thank you, Cheryl. All right, Andrew, thank you so much. Thank you. Next, our, our favorite person. <laughs> Golf course, Miss Shannon. Nicole, come on up here. And Nicole, before you start, I just want to say uh, I apologize for the the way that people have been uh, disparaging your great work. So that's all. I appreciate that. Um, July was a good month. Um, $109,000 in revenue, 3,300 golfers. It's over 100 golfers a day. Um, despite the unfavorable conditions of the golf course, uh, we're, they're still coming out to play. We're still the least expensive course around. Um, which we've kept those rates low, uh, mostly due to those conditions. Um, and the fact that our carts are uh, very old and falling apart. Uh, but yeah, this the last month could have been great, um, but instead it was just good, uh, which we're gonna just post with for now. Um, Hopefully our carts come, but I don't have an update. Uh, mm. It's been a long time. But again, you know, we are capable of more. Uh, the golf course conditions are improving. Uh, it, 
hard to gauge it unless you're there every day, and I'm there every day. And, uh, we've made a lot of progress since the uh, disaster mm. of March and April. So, um, yeah, overall a good month. Yeah. That's what we need to hear. Now, I know at our golf meeting on Monday, yes. you had gone over a couple items, the uh, the greens, uh, of course, some some of the folks were complaining about it, and I know you you've been working on that, and also the the mowers were having so so much uh, difficult uh, trying to get them up and running, especially the new one we just had delivered what a few months ago, and and it's been out of service since. So I just wanted to have you highlight on a few of those items. Sure. Give um, a little reassurance to some so, of the golfers out there. Yeah, I mean it's it's. It's frustrating. The uh, the equipment is old uh, and poorly maintained um, until now. Uh, so we are, it's kind of catching up with us. Equipment is going down left and right. Uh, we don't have backup equipment. Uh, each piece of equipment is specialized for the job that it does on the golf course. Mm -hmm. um, you can't just have any mower mow this area of the golf course. Um, we do our best to do mechanical things in-house, but for the most part, we have to outsource a technician to work on our machines, um, which will delay grass being cut for a period of time. Um, and if you just happen to play golf in that period of time, you will experience poor conditions. Um, we hope that those golfers give us a second chance. Um, and uh, yes, the, the brand new mower that was delivered a couple weeks ago lasted about two hours. Um, wow. And uh, I should have an update on that uh, by Monday. Uh, they had to call in an actual uh, technician from the engine company um, to look at it. There was something wrong with it and how it was manufactured. Um, so that's where we stand. We do have the 11 footer showing up what, <laughs> next, next week, next uh, Thursday. I, 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 believe you said. I am hoping. Yeah. Well, the, yeah, the 11 foot mower should be in town um, <laughs> sometime next week. And uh, they will deliver it and give us a short tutorial on mm -hmm. uh, maintaining it and operating it. And uh, we'll get it out on the golf course. Perfect. Thank you. All right, Nicole, thank you so much. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Hang in there. Yeah. Um, thank you. All right. <laughs> Taking a little break. Ray, uh, we're going to wait just a second. Take a little. You sure? You don't want to hear Ray speak? No. <laughs> <laughs> i got to get ready to head out of here myself. Uh, okay. Well, uh, yeah, what do we have? We, we have a couple of... Um, payments to to approve so I, you can highlight it i'll wait for him uh, to vote on because he's already read it oh yeah I'll, I'll give you so i'll give you a couple highlights just on my you have my uh july report uh on a couple construction items on, along the highway 1620 lincoln highway which used to be the dairy queen uh that had a uno issued uh it's rebranded and i apologize i forget what they rebranded the name but it's something and barbecue um, I, I was made aware of a couple comments uh, that were flying around about they're not serving ice cream, and uh, they will be, but there's a franchise issue uh, that it can't serve ice cream until actually January. Uh, oh, so wow. that's that's why they're not doing it. He he had a franchise. There was some franchise in, infringements, to my understanding, which prevented him from continuing to sell ice cream until come January, I believe. Um don't they have a second location? Foxburg. Well, yeah, I was going to say he owns that franchise in Foxburg. A lot of folks love Foxburg. that. Yeah. They, they do. They, so they were, I, I don't know what all's going on there, but that has to do something with franchising. Okay. Um, 1895, the other Dunkin' Donuts had, uh, we issued a permit for an interior and exterior renovation. They obviously waited until the, uh, or it appears they waited until the other Dunkin' Donuts was open. Um, and that Dunkin' Donuts, the new one's open, and the old one down here at the shopping center is now closed under renovation. Do you uh, know how long? Are they uh, it just really depends. I don't. 
Yeah, they're doing some. Okay. Yeah, I mean they're doing some major renovations. So really? yeah, probably for a while. Um, the new Chipotle and Starbucks at thirty two oh three and thirty two nineteen, mm-hmm. respectively, is are flying. I mean they're framed up, so they're moving right along. Uh, one hundred Rock Raymond Road, the uh, Ducklings Early Learning Center. Um, they're not a building yet, but they're doing a lot of earth disturbance and uh, starting to put some foundations. And so that building will probably go up fairly quickly. And then uh, the campus, uh, the old Bob Wagner building, the, uh, you know, the campus owns that as well. They're starting renovations in that front building. Mm-hmm. And that's also going to be a uh, recreational facility. Um, and right now it's it's kind of a wide open uh, plan with uh, the campus actually occupying three quarters of it. And the other piece to it, they're they're looking for a tenant to do some kind of recreational um, tenant space. So on to, unless you have any questions about that, I'll move on to the what's specifically under right. my Mr. agenda. Here, any questions yeah. on his report? Thank you. It's yeah. Fr- just real quick from a public works standpoint, the municipal park parking lot uh, was looks repaved good. and striped. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it looks fantastic. They did a really good job. That's ready for uh, community day. Uh, the line striping that we kind of messed up is rescheduled for September. So we should get that done in September. Um, and they just finished, didn't they finish today? The pickleball tennis court, Not, they're not finished. They're working on the tennis court, resurfacing the tennis court and putting you know new lines down, which will also include pickleball. Mm-hmm. So they're working on that with the vendor. Um, uh, Ross Bickhart from Gilmore is, I believe, on the line. Um, so I would ask him to actually speak to the first uh, A, B, and C under my agenda. Welcome, Ross. Good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you as well. <laughs> we have a um, first, first item. Uh, Ray, could you just uh, – I need well, to pull I'm, – Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, Ross. You probably didn't see it, did you? Um, <laughs> Request for board consideration to approve payment number one in the amount of two hundred and seven thousand nine hundred and sixty two and ten cents payable to Foresight Concepts Incorporated for work completed through August 4th, 2023 in relation to the Reed Street drainage improvements project. Yes. So the, uh, over the over the course of the past month to month and a half, the contractor has made some pretty good progress on construction up at Reed Street, uh, putting in a lot of curb and storm drainage. Uh, So they submitted their first pay application and uh, everything looks good to us. So we recommend payment for that. And um, they should be submitting another one soon, which will be um, on your agenda in about a month from now. And then following that, our intention is to get an application for reimbursement with grant funds out to DCED. Um, So... The summary right now would just be acting on this first uh, pay application from the contractor, which uh, we recommend be approved. Sounds good. Appreciate that, Ross. Commissioners, any questions on this payment? No. No Questions? Uh, Questions from residents? None at this time in the township building, none in Zoom world. With no further questions, entertain a motion to approve uh, payment number one. Then moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Tendero, second by Commissioner Kennedy. All in favor? Say aye. 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 <laughs> Good four zero. Right. Uh, the Real second one, I, th- I think at this point it's worth uh, just re-mentioning uh, at the last meeting, I kind of reviewed change orders with projects. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd like to add a little bit to that. In, in, on the Reed Street project all along, and that project was uh, almost four years in the making, mm-hmm. Uh, their head, you know, we knew that there was going to be field changes. Uh, it's a very old neighborhood. Uh, the infrastructure there is very old. Um, the, the width of the roads are not as wide as they probably should be or we would want them to be today. And residents had, you know, over probably 50 years had walkways that came up into the road, had been parking on the side of the road, you know, and all those things should be expected. So, uh, even though there was a lot of thought and planning going into it, we knew there was there, you know, there would be field changes and change orders. Uh, there, we, 
you know, I think all the engineers did the best they could and we did the best we could thinking about that. Uh, I also would make sure that the board understands and recognizes that, again, every change order we get, you know, we have an engineer review it, in-house we review it, uh, we beat the contractor up to make sure it's needed, to make sure that the price is what the price is supposed to be, and then after all that, then you see it on your agenda. Mm -hmm. um, even with that, it does not mean that we still don't review it as the project's going on, even after we pay it so the project can continue in case there may be legal ramifications in the end. So with saying that, uh, the second item is request for the board consideration to approve change order number two in the amount of $3,155 payable to Foresight Concepts Incorporated for tree and stump removal at 1503 Reed Street in relation to the Reed Street drainage improvement project. Ross, if you can just make a couple of comments about that. Sure. So uh, the tree in question is located uh, really just a couple of feet from one of the storm drains that was to be installed. So um, running this pipe through the roots of that tree would would certainly kill it and you know cause it to be a safety hazard. And um, I think this was one of those situations where it was not really clear on the drawings that it was to be removed. So uh, the contractor would would not reasonably have known for sure that he had to take it down uh, as part of the work for his bid for the clearing. So, you know, it seemed fair based on the way the drawings were, were bid out that, that he would be entitled to additional compensation for removing the tree since it wasn't specified to be removed. So for that reason, uh, that's why we're recommending this change order. Commissioners, any questions on this? No. Presidents, any questions? All right. None in Zoom world? All right. You have the trees in the way. It's just going to be a mess. <laughs> That's a good way <laughs> If it's to not it, removed yes. yet, <laughs> yeah, it'll be more of a hazard. So I, I agree with this. All right. Entertain a motion to approve uh, change order number two. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Kennedy, second by Commissioner Tendero. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Motion's good. Five, four zero. And third item. You know, the next one is a request for board consideration to approve change order number three in the amount of $12,452.86 payable to Foresight Concepts Incorporated for an additional work in relationship to lower inlet number 11. Ross, I know you can elaborate on this. <laughs> yes, I can elaborate quite a bit. Uh, let me know if you get bored and cut me off. So, just to give you a background on this subject. So you may be familiar with the icing on the road that was occurring on Oak Street uh, on the 1300 block. So that would be west of 14th Avenue. Um, there's a constant seep of water that comes up right at the edge of the road and then runs down and across the road. So during summertime, it's no problem, but uh, in the winter that creates, a, there's a huge ice accumulations. That's really quite a problem for public works, keeping the roads clear and for uh, the safety of the road. So part of the Reed Street drainage improvements project was, the intention was to install an under drain that would collect this uh, this seep of water while it was still underground and pipe it back to our um, new storm drainage system that is being installed by this project. And so uh, the, the difficulty is, so when my company, Gilmore Associates, got involved, we were reviewing the drawings and looking at all, everything that was supposed to be built. And we were raising some concerns about this under drain because we weren't so sure that running a, a pipe that we'd be able to get all the way down the street to where the water was coming out because it's downhill um, away from the new storm drains. So that would mean that in order to go down the hill and collect that water and then pipe it back against the way that the grade is running, that means that the new storm drains need to be pretty deep. And we were finding that inlet 11 which is the subject of this change order was not actually deep enough to receive that pipe from the area where the seep is occurring so the um the purpose of this change order is to deepen that inlet by around seven feet so that it is deep enough to get a gravity flow under drain to come back 
uh, essentially up the hill by, by just going deeper underground uh, so that it can drain out by gravity. And uh, the amounts of uh, the cost of the change orders, because the inlet is so much deeper, the contractor has to install a, uh, a few hundred feet of piping from the intersection of Oak and 14th down 14th Avenue to Sansom Avenue, uh, to Alley, I'm sorry. And uh, so basically the the extra depth of that work, it makes it quite deep and they have to use uh, different excavation methods and trench boxes for safety and so forth. So they uh, felt they were entitled to additional compensation because that's not what was shown on the drawings that they bid. And uh, we're in agreement with that, which is why we recommend this change order to get those extra costs covered and to also make it so that we can achieve the goals of the um, of the underdrain. Yeah, perfect. Ross, I appreciate you looking into it and finding out that uh, it just needed a little more care. It need yes, yep. Yeah, we, you only have you only have one shot to do this, right? Right. <laughs> so. yeah, you do not want to have to go back and try and redo that. It would be very inefficient. Yes. Commissioners, any questions on this? No. Uh, residents, any questions on the change order? None here in the township. None in the Zoom world. All right. With no further questions, uh, entertain a motion to approve change order number three. So moved. So moved. Second. By Commissioner Kennedy, second by Commissioner Tindero. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Okay, motion's good. Four zero. Ross, thank you so much. The the final thing under uh, my agenda is a uh, request for board consideration to approve and authorize the board president to sign Gilmore and Associates Incorporated proposal for professional services in the amount of twenty two thousand eight hundred and sixty dollars. Project number twenty three zero eight zero zero four in relation to the Spackman Davis farmhouse roof replacement. Um, Ross can speak to that as, as Abby could. So Ross, Abby has roped you into this as well. Huh? <laughs> yes, Ab Abby did contact me about this and uh, we have a structural engineering department within our company. So I think they're well suited for this project. And just to give you a few highlights of what's in the proposal, uh, we would actually have our structural engineers come down and do an assessment of the structure of the roof to ensure that since it's you know quite old and has the roof has been in a bit poor condition, we want to make sure that the actual structure of the building can withstand whatever new improvements we put onto it. And then um, we have included in our proposal now uh, and the services of an architect also to evaluate the historic nature and help select uh, historic uh, roofing materials that will maintain the character of that building. And then and once that is selected and re reviewed by the commissioners, then we would be putting together a specification uh, package for, for bidding for contractors to actually replace the roof. And Ross, that cost is that, that PSA is uh, not to exceed, is that right? That's correct. Yeah, the, I think you said it was a uh, twenty-two eight sixty, I believe. So that would be that would be the maximum, unless uh, something came up that was out of scope um, that that you, we all agreed was out in scope. But um, you know, assuming things go as intended, that would be the maximum. And if it costs us less to do it, we would only bill for you know that time that we actually expend. Ross, I have a question. This is Mark. Yeah. Um, there's two portions on that roof. There's there's a front and a rear. Um, I believe the front has already lost its integrity. It, it's got asphalt up there. Where'd you go? There you are. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's it, it. I'm speaking for the historical commission. Uh, it probably would behoove us to not try to make it historically accurate and look to uh, a metal roof like we have on the barn, something that's gonna last 100 years rather than having to redo it every 20, 30 years. Um, that's just my input. I... Yeah, Ross, are, are you able to, I guess, have the options? I, you know, because that, that's what we went through with the roof on the barn that are, were we going to go historical or are we just going to put a metal roof? And of course, the metal roof was cheaper. Um, so if it is an option, but 
And yeah. For the, if we were going to try to get any kind of national register for that farm at this point, we would be going for the farm, the entire farm, rather than the individual buildings. Because there was a lot of work done inside. I think there were walls put up and uh, additional room, like bathroom. There's a bathroom in the kitchen. <laughs> it's like, yes. You know, so, whatever, whatever can keep the cost down and keep the uh the beauty there yeah a couple a couple thoughts on that uh one was that we had some some coordination with abby and you know say we were to be awarded this project and then you just directed us hey gilmore we don't want you to think about this in historical terms at all just don't even worry about that act as if it's not you know historic building uh then we would we would basically not need really, really need the services of the architect and so forth. And we could cut it out, uh, cut about $3,000 off of our proposal for that reason. And then there could be potential cost savings too as a, in the actual work being done by a contractor. So that that's certainly an option. And then one other thought about that is that <clears throat> there, there can be um, metal roof selections that have a historic nature, like of a old farmhouse metal type roof so if you did want to pursue that, I think that certainly is an option, but there, I think there would be some costs involved in that, but then you do get the, the longevity of that metal roof. So I think those are all things that we would uh, first, the first step would be to do the structural evaluation and see what we're dealing with. And then we could meet with the township staff and, and the commissioners to go through some of these options before we get too far down the road. And then we would get some direction on that and then uh, proceed accordingly once once it was known. Well, thank you. And I understand that this is part of a line item that was put in the budget last year for uh, Kings Highway Park improvements. Yeah, I think we budgeted 40000 for this year. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Abby, anything you wanted to add to this since you've been working with Ross? I think... Ross summed it up well. Yeah, it's just it's up to you about the, and the and I agree. I feel like yeah. it's kind of sailed at this point with the mm -hmm. fiberglass roof on the front half, at least. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's gonna, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know. All right. That's perfect, Abby. Keep the, Thank keep you. The bus down. All right. Uh, we do have a hand raised here in the township building. Tony, come on up to the mic. A little closer right. there. There's no grant for this uh, roof. Is it grant? No. This isn't for the roof. This so is to, this is, this is to determine what would be needed. Uh, this yeah, isn't for the roof. Structural we would need a grant for the actual roof. This is structural engineering study study yeah. on sure what's we'll needed. When you actually, you actually do the roof, do you get a grant? We would need I'd a grant. To, we would yeah. definitely need a grant. Definitely would get a grant. We would definitely need a grant. Right. It's the same as no grant and no if you roof. you don't get a grant, what happens then? I don't know. OK, thank you. Thank you, Tony. Yeah. All right, Ross, anything else to add? Uh, just one, one last consideration is that there could be the potential for other grant opportunities if from historical commission type uh, agencies, you know, so that could be one benefit to continuing down the path of trying to maintain the uh, historical look and feel of the building. Uh, but I'm sure there could be some grant opportunities even the other way, but just wanted to throw that out there. Okay. Thanks, Ross. Really appreciate that. And I know that one thing that the historical commission was working on, steadily on is, uh, um, in, in the soon to be proposed historic preservation ordinance, uh, all the language was set up so that we could qualify to become a certified local government. And once we're a certified local government, the doors open up to waves of funds. We go, it's like, go to the front of the line. <laughs> so, um, I really appreciate all your thought you put into this. Sure My pleasure. Time. All right, Ross, thank you so much. Thank you.
All right, commissioners, any other questions on this? None. None? Residents, one more time around. None at this time. Enter entertain a motion to uh, approve and authorize the board. So moved. All right. <laughs> Second. Moved by Commissioner Evans, second by Commissioner uh, Kennedy. All in favor? Say aye. 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 And motion's good, 4-0. Okay. Additional business? None at this time. Public comment? Oh, yes. One up. Patty, how are you? Hi. I'm Hi. Joyce, Joyce Oh, Joyce. I don't know why I'm how thinking Patty. <laughs> and I live on Municipal Drive, 604 Municipal Drive. Mm-hmm. Uh, my questions tonight are uh, And I'm sorry, can you just kind of peel that down a little bit? Oh, whoa! Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe it's easier to hold it. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry about yeah. that. Sorry. Uh, my uh, concerns tonight are about the pickleball court that is going in. I was just wondering, uh, will it be open to everybody? Is it going to be free? Is it going to be a it's no no fee associated with it so at this time we're planning on treating it just like we did the tennis court which is first come first served um if if the enthusiasm becomes overwhelming we might have to revisit the policy but it's never been a problem with the tennis court it's just not getting so much use so while i hope that the use goes up Right. Um, we're not planning on doing that right now. Okay. So are the tennis courts locked? They're not currently. They're not. You can just go on yep. to them at any time. Yep. Will you provide nets? The nets are, um, we are just using the tennis nets that are installed. Right. Will you be for providing both. the nets for the pickleball courts? Uh, no. The pickleball will just use the existing tennis nets as well, which I've been told is something that they do other places too. Well, okay. Because, uh, for pickleball with a tennis court, you divide the tennis court so, and then you put a net on either side. I've seen that as well, but the the way they decided to do it, and this was discussed um, extensively at Parks and Rec, um, was to draw the, instead of trying to have someone play tennis on one side and two people playing pickleball, like <laughs> perpendicular to the tennis court, um, we just superimposed the pickleball court over the tennis court so it will be one or the other at a time and the pickleball lines are just a different color and it's you know smaller to accommodate pickleball but they would use the same exact net okay does that make sense not really <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> sorry because uh, where, where i play pickleball at mm -hmm. is up in uh in honeybrook mm -hmm. and it's um they have two tennis courts mm -hmm. there and you can play four uh, pickleball yep. games at a time, right. utilizing one half of each tennis court for one game. Okay. And, and like no, that. I know exactly what you mean. We just don't have the staff to go down and like monitor an extra pickleball net that's not permanently installed in the ground. Like right. The tennis so what are. Twin Valley does, if I might suggest, what they do is the township has provided four nets and they have them in a box, a storage box outside their uh, township building. Mm -hmm. And as when we go up there and we want to play pickleball, uh, we just pick up the bag with the nets in it and take it there. And when we're done, we take it right back to the township building and put it in the storage thing. And uh, we also up there have <laughs> times reserved mm -hmm. for pickleball uh, six to eight in the evening, Tuesday, Thursday, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday morning, certain hours like that too. So I'm just thinking of suggestions. Yeah, no, there's definitely a lot of different ways that other places have set it up and we did research those, but um, in the end for our first foray, we were trying to limit how much the front office staff were going to be involved, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> um, so that this was the kind of lowest yeah. common denominator Ooh. solution we came up with but uh, super popular so i would not be opposed to adding more pickleball courts elsewhere yes. anyway but yes i, I okay. hear you okay thank you you all right thank you the public comment coming up to the mic Just name and address 
Good evening. My name is Maki Hurstaferados. I am at 3520 East Lincoln Highway. Mm -hmm. I'm a new resident as of November 2022. And bear with me because I'm new to this township. And well, welcome. Welcome. Yes. yes. <laughs> so I have two issues, and um, both are under the noise ordinance. Mm. And um, the first one is related to um, commercial uh, trash dumpsters mm. by A.J. Blozinski and then the, the smaller company, uh, Eagle Disposal. And since November, they would come and pick up commercial dumpsters at 3 a.m., 4, 5, and at, at latest 6 a.m. And if you hear what a dumpster sounds like in the middle of the night, it sounds like mm -hmm. bombs oh, yeah. are going off. <laughs> and, um, I, and, and which, which uh, property, commercial property, are they uh, picking up the trash? The entire uh, oh, just... Lincoln Highway that I can visually see and hear, um, okay. they're picking up every single dumpster from every single business. And I've tried um, speaking with um, the co both companies, mm -hmm. and um, they have told me they have spoken to the drivers, but it goes in one ear and out the other. I spoke to the drivers, and the drivers told me they were never told anything, and they are following their route. And um, and recently, the trash companies have not returned my phone calls or emails or mm -hmm. messages. And then I, I um, reached out to um, the police and members of the township, and I've been told that this has become, a, this is a civil matter, and I need to go to court about resolving this. Mm. And I recently spoke to every single house on Lancaster and on Lincoln Highway. Mm -hmm. And I, and there was about, um, um, I have the number. And I also went to Hazelwood, which is over the train tracks, mm -hmm. and spoke to ev every single house that, that, that answered to me. And I have about 20 addresses that all have said that they hear the dumpsters, some of which have told me have been dealing with it for seven years. Mm -hmm. and, and others say that they hear it, but it doesn't bother them. Um, and um, so I'd like to uh, address this on behalf of them because I believe according to the township, no one has ever made a complaint. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I'm ruining my quality of life. And, um, that's pretty much that for the dumpsters and i just would like it to be after 7 a.m which is the noise ordinance time it's a fair <laughs> yeah can i just direct that to ray ray what, what's our uh well i think he, i think the resident summed it up i'm i'm not sure how we're supposed to regulate that when we've also mentioned it to the trash haulers the police have responded every time the resident has called mm -hmm. uh we can never identify exactly where they're picking the trash up. Uh, you know, I'm, I don't have a good answer. I mean, it is a commercial corridor. I'm not sure so, what else. So to they're say. hired by the commercial property. Yeah, it has nothing not, to do not, with the township. From the township. The okay. noise ordinance. Yeah. And, uh, but, but, Pat, can you? Can you? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. Pat, come on up. Just name and address real quick, Pat. Pat oh, oh, sorry. Pat Wakefield, 165 Apple Door. This has been going on. It, it sounds like an atomic blast. And or one day, one night I thought the train derailed. Mm. And you, you wake up like that, your heart is literally yeah. outside your body. Mm -hmm. And I get the people at Denron, they're like, oh my gosh. And they said, the person who answered the phone, the account manager said, it's happening all over the township. It's like the trash disposal people have gone rogue. And then you've seen West Whiteland and a couple other townships are now citing Wojcicki and bringing suits against I've them. I've read that article. Well, yeah, yeah because they're defying mm -hmm. their contract. Mm -hmm. they're, so basically, they're nullifying the contract. They work for us that we're allowing them to do business in this community, not at 3 a.m. or whenever they choose to. I understand they have a, a staffing shortage. Who doesn't? But it doesn't mean you set your own hours. And I understand the, um, the commercial businesses you know, they employ um, this service on their own, and they pay for it on their own. It's not with township funds, right. but it's the same. Wazenski does the residential and the commercial. You know, they, we have the residential contract with them, so it's it's defying logic. But I know they're having uh, problems because they were recently purchased and things like that, and they're having operational problems. 
but mm. it, it can't go on like this. I mean, there's kids being awakened and you know people who are sick and whatever, and people who are they can't get any sleep. You know, they're working different shifts and things like that. You can't go to sleep back to sleep after being awakened like that. Huh. Yeah, Pat, I I understand. I the <clears throat> in New York, my they would come and pick up the trash dumpsters at five six in the morning, and it is crazy sound well, it's made like three and to. four but the thing of it is, is a letter or anything from the board to well the, the other townships are Eagle? just finding them they're citing them the whiteland and somebody else has just started yeah. doing it because it, mm -hmm. they're they're even doing worse than that they're not even picking up the trash completely and the recyclables and whatever so it's it's really getting mm -hmm. out of hand but ray would, uh, would we, we can't noise? just we can't just cite them we can't just cite them for when they're picking up trash we would have to cite the property owners we can't we can't well, just cite okay, the trash the, holes well here's the, the other noise side of, ordinance here, here's the other side of that the property that we've called some of the businesses they have one business actually told them i don't want your service anymore and they still keep coming that the, the, the business owners they don't want this either so it's out of control so somebody you know needs to put some kind of boundary in place i mean we already have an ordinance in place and they're just defying it mm -hmm. so I, I just don't think it's logical to keep having it going on Excellent point. Yeah. Well, we'll talk to Scott as well because he's responsible for our uh, waste recycling. Yeah. Just to add to um, what Miss Pat said, that um, one of the businesses also that I spoke to had said, well, um, thank you for letting us know. We called them and we changed our pickup time to afternoons. Mm -hmm. And then they were con they did not change that. The, the business told me, so we don't understand what's happening. We told them, come in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and they're still showing up at the same times. They're not, their word is not getting okay so Perhaps moving on to the next um maybe the board can send a letter to eagle and Bozinski saying uh, understand that you're not in <coughs> compliance with our noise ordinance which is pick up times uh to start this process yeah. something like that to, yeah can uh, let's get scott to reach out yeah. to these folks first yeah we, we did start, okay i mean we did once but i mean i think scott's yeah. maybe still on here well, we can again. I mean, I'll talk to Kristen Camp about the the yeah, problem. I, the problem with the noise ordinance, like any of our ordinances, it has to be directed at the property owner. We can't just randomly right. chase That's down. That's what needs to be done, unfortunately. Yeah. But well, but the problem is, I mean, I you know, I like one complaint was, well, it's this business. I went to that business. It wasn't that business because their dumpster was still full. So it yeah. definitely wasn't their trash hauler. So that's the problem we run into on Lincoln Highway. Yeah. But it. but I do agree with you. I mean, we certainly can reach out or, you know, as as a municipality, we could write a letter to those haulers. Mm -hmm. That could be that could be one. And one of them, we do contract for our own trash hauling. Mm -hmm. uh, you may want to be careful about how that's worded or nobody's trash will get picked up potentially. But <laughs> well, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not sure that's correct in the whole township, but yeah. right. mm -hmm. they've, they've gotten there straight they've got it straightened out at least where i live they were they were missing everything uh they do have that straightened out and and, and since i've moved in in november you know this has been happening every mostly every monday morning and so i'm, I'm sure the township has looked into it a couple of times but i i have pictures of them going to every business that i could uh, take a video of them or picture of them uh picking up the dumpster and and in one instance, um, that I can't see a dumpster from where my property is, but you see the, the trash truck go behind the business, you mm -hmm. know, you hear the noise and then it comes out. And again, it, they may not pick up everyone's at the same time, but usually, they, I guess, logistically, they try to pick up as many as they can. Um, and um, correct. Mm -hmm. mm. Right, correct. Okay. So then if we'd like to move to the next, um, the other, the only other issue that I mm -hmm. have, and um, that would be with 3527 um, Academy Sports Complex. And since November, as I've moved in, I noticed that from Monday through Friday, from 10 p.m. to 1 a.m., they're at their busiest time. It seems as if those are the only times they're open and they're cut their customers. Um, usually in half hour intervals will come out and loiter the parking lot and be yelling and screaming and whistling 
and even sit in their cars and blast music. And I have videos of all this and even have videos of them working on their cars, mm -hmm. playing soccer in the parking lot, fighting in the parking lot. And I have all video of that, which I can show if you'd like, of them um, um, doing all of this and, um, and, and more. And that they are, um, I can hear them through my windows yelling and screaming. And I can only hear the highs, the lows, the, the, and, and I give them a chance to, to leave at least 15 minutes when they're leaving and they, you know, uh, sometimes um, it takes them a little longer to leave. Mm -hmm. But some of them, if I don't make a call, they will stay there until 1 a.m. Or, or later. But usually it's 1 a.m. is the cutoff. And they, um, they just loiter in the parking lot. And so having had brought this up to the police, the police m maybe 50 times have come out and dispersed the crowds and made them leave. And uh, on few occasions have taken names. And um, I have was, I've been told that um, to try and reach out to the business. And the business um, told me that if they see a problem, that their employees would handle it. But I also have video, which I can show you, that the um, management, uh, who the, the, I'm sorry, the police had told management also and said every now and then, try to clear the parking lot out and, you know, see that people are not loitering and make them leave. And management had said, we will do that. And we have been trying. And I can show you video of management getting in their car and leaving to go home, locking the doors and leaving parking lot full of different groups to loiter and mm -hmm. not telling them to leave. So they're not doing their part. And and now, um, a chief, do you want to weigh in on this? I mean, if, if we have folks loitering that late, that early in the morning, uh, do you have anything to add to that or any, any reports from the officers? Well, there's a loitering. So the businesses are typically the victim of people who loiter on their property. Right. I, I, so I think we're looking at two different issues here. Mm -hmm. the, the sound that's an annoyance to the resident and people who are legally parked and congregating on the property owner's property and they don't mind. So unless when we arrive there's actual disorderly conduct going on, um, you know, there's, there's mm -hmm. nothing for us to cite for other than, you know, asking them or politely telling them that they're they're you got a complaint and mm -hmm. they're loud and they're they're annoying a resident but un unless there's something criminal going on there's not yeah. a whole lot that we could do at that point and we've i lost count how many times we've huh. been dispatched there um hmm. and i can't find a report where our officers arrived and and found people yelling and screaming or fighting Mm -hmm. or other than just being there it, um, and most of it had to do with I think a food truck that the business used for people who were at the sports complex late in the evening that's how we initially started to get involved the complaints were primarily about people being there for the food truck okay. um, and then I think it's just progressively gotten worse so I would like to add that the um, in, in recent time the, the food truck um, had contributed to the loitering and things, and I might say that things were worse previously, but have gotten better since the food truck is not there because they did not have a, um, a food license and they were uh, forced to leave by the food inspector. So, um, but since then, because I, I also have video of cars arriving from Lincoln Highway who were not even relative to the sports complex, they were just um, customers of the food truck, and they would then eat in the parking lot and hang out. And so um, since they have left, I can thankfully say that it has gotten better. And um, But it wasn't directly from the food truck as they, they were behind the building that I could not see. Okay. And, and does this happen more on the weekend, during the week? During the week. On the weekends, the business is visually closed. The doors oh, are locked. Okay. Because during the week they're there till one in the morning. 
typically um, uh, um, on average 11 to 12 is when they let people out, but then the people will linger. Um, last night was 1225, but yeah. they, they they left without in peace. Mm -hmm. And tonight, I'm sure it will be again. <laughs> okay. And uh, I think we're just going to have to internally yeah, figure out if there's a solution to this. Yeah. And I would love to add to the solution. I just, I know that it will be very difficult to come up with something as we're saying that, you know, where does this fall? It's not criminal. Uh, I understand that. And, mm -hmm. um, um, you know, and I, I don't know the answer either. I'd like to come up with one. Okay. So if the, if the business owner took a stand, there's, yeah. there's a, a section in the crimes code, code called loitering and prowling at nighttime, right? So mm -hmm. if, the business owner posted the property, you know, no loitering probably after hours, and people continue to do so, then we would be able to cite them for it. But again, and I think the gentleman attested to the fact that he's seen the property owner leave and not take exception to the fact that people were remaining on the property. Right. So when, mm -hmm. when we get there again, unless there's some other type of criminal activity afoot, mm -hmm. maybe it's our adults, they're not, they're not, underage children um so there's really nothing we could do other than to try to keep the peace um, mm -hmm. and would the and noise ordinance actually do anything well the, they're that the, loud the the problem the problem with the no the problem with the noise ordinance is mm -hmm. i i have to be there i have to witness it and it has to continue for a certain amount of time okay. so that's that's the problem but what based on what the chief is saying I guess maybe one of the things, like we said but about the trash haul, it might be a stern letter from Scott or, mm -hmm. or the township in mm -hmm. general. The 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 loitering uh, issue, mm -hmm. you know, let me look. I mean, maybe we need to change our focus to the property owner. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure, but I, I can look for something to, to see, you know, if there's a way to, to let him know that this is progressing. It's his property his management because uh, he he hires somebody I've, I've spoken to them as well mm -hmm. he hires somebody that manages the facility and maybe let him know what's going on and that you know it's starting to look negative on him and maybe he needs to take a stronger interest on you know who's managing the actual sports complex okay and ray touched on something um as far as the noise ordinance goes so it's 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 ours of course and decibel level correct yeah. and i purchased the sound meter we have to witness it yeah the problem is when we get a call or a complaint from a resident about the trash truck making a lot of noise by the time we get there that noise is oh, yeah. long yeah. dissipated and i have video so that could help but that un yeah unfortunately it, in a court of law it it doesn't i've been unfortunately i've been down this road before it, I can't use your video now. Say we went to court. Say we were able to go to court. First off, I have to witness and I have to take the video. I could get you to come to support that, but I wouldn't be able to use your video as the only evidence. That's why I said I think maybe the approach has to turn towards Mr. Rudy, who actually owns the property, you know, and try to take a different angle. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, we'll we'll discuss this and figure yes. it out. Could you leave your information with Denise just sure. so we can reach out to you? Yes, please. Okay. Right, right now? Uh, it, yeah, by the end of the meeting here. We're, we're almost done. We're yeah. wrapping up soon. Thank you. But I appreciate much. you coming up here. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, yes. Public comments. Uh, no more. Oh, we have one more here in the township building. Just name and address. Jonah Conway, 315 North Bailey Road. I was going to ask for a traffic study for um, North Bailey and Windsor, but the chief, obviously, the uh, the uh, gentleman earlier kind of put that at ease for me. Mm -hmm. um, I've been here about eight years. Um, since the craft house closed, traffic there has got a little better at night, mm -hmm. but I've lost three mailboxes and one dog. Oh, wow. And one dog. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. You know, I'm sorry. It's 25 miles an hour. If they were, and I see the chief puts up the, you know the carnival lights with the radar you know um fortunately or unfortunately i've been in law enforcement 28 years still mm -hmm. active um they don't stop i know that um they do the speed trap i've gotten caught in it myself 
you know. Um, I get it, you know. Um, we're all hurting for law enforcement hires. Um, but I, I just, for that intersection there, sooner or later, a kid's going to get killed. Um, they come over that hill. Oh, yeah. Days and nights over the hill. They come down the hill. I can sit there and watch them. They don't stop. Um, like I said, I haven't been here long enough, so I don't know. Does the township entertain speed bumps? Or is that a traffic safety? We've thing discussed as well? that before, Chief. Yeah, I'm sure you have. I I, uh, I personally would be highly opposed to speed humps. Or uh, ambulances and fire trucks is about the worst issue. I'd have to argue with that. Well, there's a couple. I, no, I understand right that, but but you're talking about um, the response time for an ambulance and a fire, and even law enforcement. Speed bumps slow down, but doesn't stop them from getting where they got to go. Mm -hmm. EMS, I'm sure they don't do it different in the county. You stabilize before you leave. The I, patient stay. I'm not. I'm not talking about response time. I'm talking about wear and tear on the vehicles. Well, you're talking about property then, over life. You can argue that with those people. No, you right you brought there. it up, not him. You brought it up. I, I would argue against them. Property day over long, life. Every day a week. Property every over day. life. Okay. Does the township ever entertain red light cameras or speed cameras for? 30 at least with all the, the businesses and the, the construction for the housing, the influx in cars and traffic. Has that ever been talked about yet? Or just something we're not in, interested in? For income revenue at least in the future. Yeah. Yeah, Chief, you want to comment on yeah, that? Because I, I brought some of this up years ago when the Chief was got. You talked about Lincoln Highway? Yes. Um, so we had, um, it took us years, believe it or not, to get 10 dot to properly post Lincoln Highway for speed enforcement because according to the vehicle code, the speed limit has to be posted every half mile in order to enforce it. Um, and we've begun uh, within the last uh, year, we have lines painted. You'll see it on certain parts of, of Lincoln Highway. Um, mm -hmm. So that's that's been the extent of, of our enforcement efforts. We really haven't discussed red light cameras just has never come up before. Okay, that's all. Thank you. And we did. We actually did a. Um, we did a traffic study at that intersection. Uh, you're, sure. You're at some about. point. And again, what's it short and, on you know, accidents? The, the previous gentleman was really disappointed, but we. You know, it's five. It's five crashes in a year, plus plus volume, um, and like we have. A record management system it's electronic you're in law enforcement you know what i'm talking about so like i could go in and i could put an intersection in and i could mine that uh rms for, for data um, so i hope he didn't get the impression the previous gentleman that when i said we conducted that study over eight or nine days that it was because there was no traffic crashes there between eight or nine days yeah. that no, it was a because year. of that did not warrant i mean it's five crashes over any 12-month period, not during a calendar year, not mm -hmm. during a fiscal year, over any 12-month period. And um, it's not a discretionary thing. I mean, the criteria is what it is. Okay. You know, you gotta, unfortunately, there's a lot of things in our profession that we have to live with, I know. whether we agree with it or not, and that's, okay. that's one of them. Okay, thank you. And right. just to clarify, I, I don't think any of us are, are opposed to things like red light cameras at all. It's just a matter of I mean, it, we're, they, we're talking you know. about they do it in obviously major yeah. metropolitan city. Right. Yeah, this all, here isn't yeah. at that level, but you know, you're getting more and more traffic, more and more people. Mm -hmm. The roads are becoming more and yeah. more clustered. I mean, speeding here isn't as bad as it is in other parts. They have that implemented, but it generates revenue to some extent, which would help down the line. I mean, I probably won't be around by then, but you know, at some point in time, you would hope that there's some sort of avenue of revenue when you have that much more. And not just on the tax bracket, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Listen, you want to speed through town, you're, you might get a ticket. Go through a red light, you might get a ticket. I would like the state to wake up and start looking into implementing Vision Zero. You know. I'm sorry. Uh, could you repeat? Vision that? Zero. Mm -hmm. You know. I mean, but they're not doing it. <laughs> Our police are doing the best they can with what Thank they've you. got to work right. with. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate the uh, comments. I, I, just to clarify, the whole idea of red light can't be in a Lincoln Highway is a PennDOT Highway. Is that a PennDOT? Yeah. It, it is, and we certainly 
have had those conversations, we can continue. I mean, the next, especially the next time we do, you know, some kind of upgrade or we have a development going in, you know, when they're doing traffic studies and all that, it's probably definitely worth, you know, worth having those conversations. Thank you. And, and Abby, you said there was somebody online? Okay. Uh, I know that everyone, I know that everyone's tired and it's very late and I will make this quick, but I would like to bring up uh, the Lloyd Farm because two things have changed over the past eight weeks. Um, this past week, I was given, I was sent some photographs of the in interior of the Lloyd Farm. All of the banister on all of those uh, staircases that go up three stories in a circle are gone. So that if anyone falls or steps off that thing from the upper floor, they're going to die. The entire building is 100% open. The, the basements are open. The whole thing is open. Um, kids are in there. The, the likelihood of someone falling and injuring themselves has now increased dramatically whether there's a rape or a fall or whatever. So that was one thing that's happened over the past two weeks. I asked to be given those photographs and it was a young person who wouldn't give them to me <laughs> for fear that they, you know, they're not supposed to be there. A number of weeks ago, and you'll have to ask the police chief maybe can speak to this a number of weeks ago and maybe even a month or more ago, I was given, I was sent to Cal and watch two emails from parents who had found an email on their children's teenagers' phones from downtown high school that about a, a potential party. They were going to have a big party up there at the Lloyd Farm. Um, and I think she called the police, and I, I, I was told later that they did something about there were There were groups of children, kids, these are teenagers, in St. Martha's uh, parking lot gathering and at the Taco Bell gathering to have a big party up there. Now... I know that in the past we've said we can't do anything about this. And I also know that Callan can't be sued if something terrible happens. But that isn't going to absolve us of the responsibility to do more than we've done. So I would ask, because I was told by somebody from a different township, that in fact we do have rights under the state code and we may have to adjust our own ordinance, whatever. But there are ways to deal with that house. And it really has to be dealt with because at some point, I'm going to tell you right now, those that staircase, you're talking about 10 foot ceilings up three stories and the, the center of it is all open. So if you step off, you go, go straight down three stories. It, you won't let. It sounds like, you know, these kids are trespassing. Oh, absolutely. But so, it's so not that, closed that's, up. That's the first issue. Yeah, we but be dealing with. well, well you can deal with that as an issue, but the, the reality is it's, it up. It's an attractive nuisance yeah. is the word. It's become an attractive nuisance that, that attracts young people. Mm -hmm. And yes, they are trespassing, but it's also we know if it's, Ray, open. Do we know if it's open again? Yeah, it is. And is Miller still responding to things? I was there. It's open. It's open? It is open. Yeah. Should and be boarded up? He boards it up on a regular basis. Oh, oh they tear it down. Well... You know, that's fine. That's not, you know, at one point he had fencing around and he took it all away. Yeah, if yeah, he has to was... fence it, fine. But I'm going to tell you something. If somebody hurt goes down, yes, he'll be sued. But so will the township take it in the, the township's going to take a hit. No, we can't be sued. That's not the point. And in the meantime, the police, you know, you can't, there's no way to get up there. That driveway, you can't get a police vehicle. You can't get an ambulance. Busy, Somebody's injured. You're done. Was so there I'm an just actual asking, party? I mean, your original comment was that there was a, a gathering that was going to happen. Did that actually happen? No, they stopped it. I was told the police okay. stopped. It. Parents went down there and, and raised hell hmm. with the kids. Yeah, I, th I was also told police came. Is that true? Chief? I can't hear. Nope. Yeah, you got to get to the microphone and that's all count. <laughs> all those places. So how did Downingtown police? Okay. So people down in dog park, we could hear the stuff being ripped yeah. apart. We could hear the screaming and everything. And we could see them coming up. Uh, they come up through the Taco Bell and uh, back of St. Yeah. Marcus and everything. They come up through the cornfield. 
So we would hear the, they, they're bringing tools. They're like banging and ripping and whatever yeah. since the construction. We would call the Downingtown police and they were right on it. So, but it was like almost an everyday occurrence when school was in. So the party that Cheryl was mentioning, yeah, they were going to have a big uh, end of year school blast. Yeah. Downingtown police got them right away, but school's back in session again. And I have not seen the house because it's all planted over and everything right now, mm -hmm. but I, it, it was pretty bad in the winter. I mean, they, um, what, what's his face? Uh, Miller, he boards it up a lot. Mm -hmm. he, he's got to be sick and tired of doing it. What do you do if you, a day later, they come with utensils? Well, and that, tear it off? there are I'm ways the to chief. deal with that. <laughs> the chief was going to say something. And you, no, go sorry. ahead. Yeah. It's not been able to, to respond. So, hi, Mrs. Spaulding. I, I just yeah. want to correct uh, a misunderstanding maybe on, on your part. Um, I'm very familiar with the incident that you're talking about and I think you had put out information that day that the Callan police would not respond um, and that residents were to call the state police. And that that's just not true. Um, that is private property. There are certain limitations, but in a situation that involves any threat to public safety, um, we're 100% gonna respond. There's no need to involve any outside agencies and actually, I was standing on the front porch of that property the day that that erroneous message was sent out. And I say this respectfully because I, That's fine. I, I know, I know you, you were well intended, um, but we were working very closely with Downingtown PD um, and the Downingtown school district. And for two nights in a row, when that party was alleged to have occurred, I had officers there um on the property and fortunately nothing happened um, I, I i don't mind your comments at all uh chief and and i certainly uh respect your opinion and i will take that into consideration that's what i was told but all that having been said the position at the township has always been that it's private property we can't do anything about it and i'm going to tell you that i was told by another and, and you know this is a different township but that they, you know, once something becomes uh, an attractive nuisance, as this is now clearly an attractive nuisance, it's attracting kids, that there is information in the state ordinance that permits us to do something about it. So all I'm asking is, I think we need to talk to Kristen Camp and find out exactly what we can do under the overall ordinances and what that we can, by that I mean, apparently you are allowed to, I, I was told from another township, you are allowed to send, basically send Miller a letter. You tell him he has an attractive nuisance. If he doesn't take care of it, the township can go in, board it up, put the fences around it, fine him plus 10% of the cost. And that's been done. We have, we have sent him letters and he repairs them. And I'll remind you of something, Ms. Spaulding, at this very moment, if you push that guy any further, there's nothing to stop him from coming in and getting a demolition permit. There's nothing to stop that. I understand that, so Mark. You, but the problem so is at the this problem point in time, is you're going to lose the house if if you push him. If you like do this, put up a fence and find him. He's going to just take it down. We can't stop it right now. So we'll tell him to board it up again, and people need to just Mark. I understand what you're saying, but the reality is at this point in time, you've not been there. I've seen the pictures at this point in time, the possible, the prob, and I hate this. Don't misunderstand me. The probability of anyone saving that house is probably 10%. There's nothing okay. left of it. All right, Cheryl. I, okay. I know it's getting kind of late. Yeah, it's uh, fine. We'll, we'll look into this. Uh, thank I you. I appreciate you bringing it, bringing it to our attention. Yes, so thank you. if there's any other public comment, uh, if not, I will entertain a motion. So for adjournment. moved. So moved. Second, all in favor, say aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Have a safe and happy uh, Labor Day weekend, everyone. Thank you. Aye.